Dean, I usually don't like to talk medical stuff on Collecting Weekly, uh-huh. but I have I have a problem. What's that? I have a problem. I woke up this weekend, and my my hand was really weak. Oh. And you know I've been dealing with some problems for like the past maybe year and a half, two years, a little bit of carpal tunnel going on, and I, I kind of changed. Yeah, it changed a lot of my life, you know, did a little bit of more ergonomics stuff, kind of stopped doing some things that I really enjoyed, like painting and model building. But I think I know what triggered it. I think I know what triggered it, Dean. What? I've been, I've been over jomboing. Like, like this, it hurts so bad to do this. Like I've been, I've been doing, I've been hitting the jombo a bit too hard. And it's, it's fucked my shit all the way up, bro. Mm, sus. I think you've been doing something else with that hand. Yeah, I think there's some other. <laughs> there's a lot of doing hand, I gotta start hitting a left job. Yeah, I was gonna. You were like, I think I know what the problem is. I was gonna How say, does this like, motion okay, feel? Or... I don't know, Dylan. Why don't you tell me? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the one with carpal. Because <laughs> you yeah, got you experience, stopped, bro. You've you worked past that my... stage. <laughs> you stopped building my model before the jumbo, though. Yeah, but that's different, though. <laughs> that's different. I learned from uh, from a good friend, Echo Base Customs. That's why. I, uh... <laughs> wow! Wow! Are you an angel? What? An angel. I heard the deep space pilots talk about them. They're the most beautiful creatures in the universe. Hello there. We are tonight's entertainment. We would be honored if you would join us. You've got a billion toys. <laughs> oh. You brought in a doll collection. These are not dolls, Jim. These are commodities. Same as gold or oil. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. You are now listening to the Collecting Weekly Podcast. Oh. This is the true form of floor gang right here. Very nice. YouTube.com slash collecting weekly. Thank you very much. That's very cool. Big, big, big. Hey guys, my name is Zach. I'm Dean. Dylan. I'm Dylan. Dylan you Sorry, mother- it wouldn't come off Dylan, me. I you swear mother- to God. Fucker, dude. <laughs> it How wouldn't come off. How dare you? How Danny. dare you? Jumbo. And, I, and I'm Sean, also Jumbo, without Jesus injury. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm doing the left this time. Welcome to it. this week's episode of Collecting Weekly. It's a weekly podcast where my friends and I talk about the things that matter the most to us this week in collecting. That's right. We want to thank our friends over at 16 Corner for sponsoring this week's episode. You can go to their website, use code CW10, that's capital CW10, during our live recordings for 10% off all in-stock item, guys. Check that out. They wow. are a bunch of angels. We have a great show planned for you guys tonight. Uh, quite a few interesting things that have popped up this week, uh, but Dean, before we get into that, we have a very special segment that all the best shows start out with. Yeah, you guys ready? Yes. It's new this week. Yeah, uh, what'd you get new this week? Um, yeah, so I, thanks to Zach, the sweet angel that he is, rarely, he found me this, it's so hard to see it in this light. It's the uh, foil variant of Punchline's cover number one, CGC 9.8. Very, the back is absolutely gorgeous. But he found this for me, and uh, I paid way too much for it, but I needed it. Um, and then I also got this Joker number eight. It's really not important. I just love the cover. It's uh, Punchline sitting on like a throne. Uh, also oh, wow. CGC 9.8. Damn, you're going hard on Punchline. I also got one of her key issues. Uh, first cameo. Uh, that's shipping soon. And I'm looking for Hell Risen 3 literally right now on my phone. But I might wait for after the show. Nice. Is that is that cover embossed? It looks, it looks you know, like raised uh, or something like that. The foil or the, the one where she's on the throne? The throne one. Nope, it's totally flat. Oh wow! Yeah, from least least in the camera or whatever, it looks it looks embossed from this far yeah. away. It'd be cool if it was, but no. Yeah. Uh, again, it's not an important issue. I just thought it looked really cool. Yeah. 
shit <clears> name. <throat> but that's all I got this week. What about you guys? Uh, let's check out what Usby got this week. Usby, uh, tell us what you got. Yeah, so uh, Jose in the Patreon chat, he posted this when it went up, and I pre-ordered it right away. This is the Thor's Hammer uh, from the Infinity Saga. Um, it's about a thousand pieces or so, um, and inside it's got some, you know, um, uh, cool little features that you can, there's like a door that you can open up and put some stuff in there um, from the Infinity Saga. So, yeah, I just thought it was pretty cool. Life-size replica Lego um, looks pretty cool, and it will display well, so I'll be... Uh, building this on bricks and brews this weekend so early starting it because uh it's pretty big so um yeah just thought it was super cool and uh i uh, had to pick it up for sure it's unique for sure what's the uh piece count on this one uh 979 so it's about a thousand wow yeah should do well looks, so. looks pretty sweet yeah it's interesting that they're going with um like i've noticed with lego like they're not calling this mjolnir they're yeah. calling it thor's hammer is that like political thing like pc or like they just don't have licensing for the name no i bet you they can call it that but like i mean how are you, how are you gonna go into a you know lego store and ask you know try and spell your near when you're trying to search for it meow, like that. Meow. yeah i bet wow. you i bet you it's more of a ease of of search or ease of shopping or ease of find type slave thing, one's so. pretty easy to spell well um, you know that's a little different i guess <laughs> but um yeah and, <laughs> Uh, speaking of Lego, too, the, the other thing I might try and pick up this week, I don't have it yet, obviously, or I have it here, is the McLaren F1 um, uh, Technic that dropped today. So I'm going to try and pick that up this week as well. Wow. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. Very excited for you there. Um, Danny, uh, Dylan, I don't think you got into this week, but Danny, did you get anything to this week? No, I did not. All right. So I got Thank a... You for no problem, bro. Anytime, baby. Uh, so... Last week, um, when I was picking up my Crown Series Gandalf, uh, I had seen a post on our local uh, Facebook group called the Alamo City Stash Bin that this Walmart had gotten, like, the, um, what do you call them, Dylan? They're, like, like the aisle displays for the Batman. I don't know what you call them, but it's just, like, a big-ass box like, of... End cap or something? End cap. There you go. Thank you. And so, um, I was like, dang, that Walmart's so far. A few hours later, I got a call from Steven. I was like, oh, shit, I'm going to be right next to that Walmart. Went there, and sure enough, they had the whole brand new McFarlane, like, three-wave uh, pack. And I picked up the 12-inch pre-posed uh, Batman figure, and um, it's it's a statue, but you do have, like, a little bit of articulation in the arms and the wrist. Um, but overall, it's definitely pretty neat. There's some interesting things about it. He doesn't have eyes painted. It looks like there's, like, lenses over the um the eyes and the cowl so i don't know if that's like a I, I haven't seen that in any of the trailers so that kind of surprised me um but i am still looking for the red um gold label version uh but this is one that we talked about after dark a few weeks ago uh sam is asking the price point these were 40 dollars, so definitely yes. pretty reasonable for a 12 inch statue so this was not the resin one right uh there's a so this one, they call it the 12-inch pre-posed, and then they also have the one six scale where he's, like, more dynamically yep. posed with, like, a fabric cape. So this is um, this is not that version. Uh, the other one, I believe it's, like, $200. So Yeah, there's a full-out, like, fully resin one, I think, that we covered, too, on Small Talk. It's definitely not bad. Uh, Dean, if you can make me Big Cam or Dylan. Um, the cape drapes it? really well. Oh, oh, there we go. Sorry. Cape cape drapes really well got some decent paint on it uh like i said you do get a little bit of articulation in the arms uh but overall you know for the price i don't think it's too bad i think i actually really like mcfarland's portrait of uh pattinson and uh i'm like picking up everything i can from the movie so how much are these forty dollars not bad the, not bad at all the they did also stupid expensive yeah it's like 200 bucks well, it's supposed to be like it's pretty much a six at you. So, think yeah. of it. Think of it like. Yeah, but it's not made of polystone. It's gonna be the same plastic. It's resin. Yeah, that the bigger one yeah. is like actual statue material. Wow. This one's definitely like a vinyl. Okay. All right. I yeah. The only thing I don't like about this one is he does lean a bit. I don't know if you guys can see that. So I want to put some like hot glue in his 
like the little peg holes for the feet just to get them more uh upright but yeah definitely a great little uh piece there and uh it's a nice what accent about joint so I think the gap's probably a bit too thick for joint juice. Joint juice is like if the joint's a little loose, but this is like, I just think the hole that they put in the foot is like maybe oh. like one size too big for the uh, the peg. But yeah, good idea. Good plug. Absolutely good plug. What were you saying, Dylan? I was just nothing stupid. <laughs> I, was just well, I, I, I have a question about it. Is that the cape, is that vinyl as well? Because it seemed to flow pretty well, or is it fabric? Okay, it's vinyl, but it fucking like, drapes, like, yeah. amazingly. It's That's super... what I was going to point out. That's a really interesting yeah. material. That's not what have, I, not at all what I would have expected yeah, looking at so, pictures of it. Yeah, to be honest, I think the cape is the most impressive part to me. Um, and it's interesting because in all the different batman suit toys some have the the armor over the suit like a grayish color and some have it black so i'm excited to watch the movie and see what it really is because i actually prefer the gray this one this one's definitely black um but we'll, we'll have to wait and see on on the weekend uh but anyways that's enough with new this week let's get into the news starting with ghostbusters afterlife ecto-1 this comes in uh from comic concepts sideshow has not put this up for order yet but on comic concepts you can get it for $1,799, and this releases Q1 2023. Um, I definitely like it. Don't get me wrong. I, I was a huge, huge fan of the film. Um, I, um, I went on record saying that I think it's my favorite film of uh, 2021. Such a great uh, film that really, I think, showed a lot of love for the uh, the, the other films in the franchise. And I, I think it's interesting that Dan, I feel like their mistake here in this release is that they're asking you to commit, you know, $1,800, not including shipping or tax without the guarantee that any figures are going to be made for it. Now they've said we're working on it. This is in progress. But for me, this is one that I would personally recommend people waiting to pre-order if possible i don't know how limited this is going to be um but I, I i think it would really suck if you dropped you know probably more than two grand and uh if you don't already have the original ghostbusters you wanted to get the afterlife characters uh that would be quite unfortunate but the weathering on this is absolutely incredible the different functions that it has were really good this is a massive massive vehicle the price point i have zero problems with this this thing is you know the delorean and the different batmobiles i mean they're big on their own but this is like this is a whole nother animal um and i i think it's great there's a lot of people that uh in the groups this weekend ghostbuster fans that were really complaining that they didn't get the original one remade slash reissued uh, i think that's silly there's clearly a difference in the paint application and some of the functions from this film that I think a lot of people would be missing out on. Uh, and like John says, you know, you're preserving a little bit of value for the original. So, uh, Dean, what do you think about it? Uh, I think it's even like the interior is like meticulously done. Well, um, the dashboard, the steering wheel, like this thing is beautiful, but I think you're 100 percent right. It's like, well, what about the figures? Um, because the car isn't this beat up in the original Ghostbusters. I mean, it's kind of a beater, but it's not this. That's bad. what I was. That's what I was gonna ask. How different is it? I would say fairly, just in terms of like the, the rust and stuff. Um, because like that was the whole shtick of like Ghostbusters. Is, they bought this rundown hospital, and I want to say, or uh, fire, fire, yeah, uh, fire uh, in a station. Yeah, and I, I want to say this was in there. Um, I think and, they bought it separately, but it was oh, like they? definitely a junker. But they did kind of like pimp it out a bit. Yeah, they dolled they, it. Up, they definitely so. painted it. Yeah, um, but other than that, I mean, if you just wanted something ghostbusters in your collection i mean this is really all you need you don't need four figures you don't you know need anything other than their car you know what i mean 
some movies can get away with that and i there's not a lot i think this is one of them where it's like all you need is the cars so i could see someone just getting it just to have it but uh, i think exactly completely right. agree the uh, lack of figures is kind of like a well for some people i could see that's a huge deal breaker yeah, let me uh, address the chat here. Sam says, I've seen the original go for as much as 4500 Trendy says, pretty trashed in relation to the OG. Uh, Ninja Squirrel says, you know they will release the original in two months once pre-order numbers are <laughs> in are good. Um, uh, Trendy Tech leaving us a nice little comment there. Uh, Ninja Squirrel says, buy a real car for this money. They melt collectors way too much in 2020+. plus. This thing is massive, Ninja. This thing is... Honestly, like, I, I do understand this is a tremendous amount of money, but this thing is fucking huge. Uh, we also have, let's just go down the list, Toy Mafia, Irwin, Badfish, Sam, Paul Schreiber, David Jones, Pablo Mesa, Brenton Palmer, uh, Mark Pearson, Caesar M, Ninja Squirrel, Equan, uh, Lemur, Hernandez. Uh, we also have... Ba -ba -da -bum. Caesar saying it's 1900 for the Acto one. I guess it depends where you're getting it from. When I checked Comic Concepts, it was 1799. Uh, John Ortiz. Uh, let's see who else do we got. Uh, Mario also. What's up, Mario? Bunch of people in the chat. Uh, Gigi Dylan just left a good. Oh, here we go. Gigi says, "I'm gonna be honest. Some things I don't get. I absolutely don't get this. Unless me and Pancake can cruise in it, absolutely fucking not." <laughs> let's be let's be honest. Pancake might be able to actually fit in that. Thing. Uh, yeah, probably Pancake. Can Pancake. Fit on top. Yeah. Wow. Yes. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, that's um. Oh, Caesar says it, it is up on BBTS for 1900. Uh, Dylan, comic concepts, to the baby. Original movie, they like completely restore this car. I'm okay. looking at screenshots and it's like fucking clean. I haven't seen the new one yet. I heard a lot of good things about it. But yeah, I would agree. Like, this is one of the one offs where if you need something from a Ghostbusters, you just get the vehicle. I think if I was a big fan, that's probably what I would have done. But yeah, that. I don't know. This is a pinnacle of your collection if it's there. It's not something just in addition to. Like, this is something yeah. you're showcasing, you know? Yeah. Yeah, right. So I I don't have a ton of interest in Ghostbusters. Okay, I like Ghostbusters. I've never been interested in collecting it for whatever reason. Um, and I haven't seen the new one yet. But this, yeah, uh, from what I've s I saw with the old one, because Blitzway did the old one themselves too, right? That was Blitzway, right? Yeah, this is the same company yep. that's done the first yep. one and the first figures. Yeah, they've said that they're going to start <laughs> making them for this film as well. Yeah, that's, I, I think, pretty good, or good to hear because of, you know, they got the track record. Now they knocked that one out of the park for the most part. I don't know if there's really anyone who is disappointed with that thing, maybe besides the surprise about the size, but... Yeah, the first one, there was some reports of, like, rattling from... I, I believe the lights in it actually have, like, a, a moving function, and I think, if I remember correctly... Uh, King Zack had it, and I think you have to like upload the tracks, like for the sound effects, to the car itself. Like I don't think they had the license for the music, mm. so they kind of give you like a storage device that you place in it. <laughs> if I remember correctly, it's been a while, but some people were complaining it was kind of a hassle. Um, but I mean, overall, I think it was like the four pack and the the um, Ecto one were like figure of the year worthy. For a yeah, lot of if if that's the worst thing about it, then. <laughs> then yeah that's pretty damn good like out of all the things that could be fucked up on that thing all the you know complaints you could have with it tires you know being off or you know axle being crooked i don't know any sort of thing that could be wrong with that and if it's that you have to upload your own music that's pretty good danny what do you think of this i think this looks amazing it's like so detailed it's got all the accessories and Everything's just detailed. The suicide doors, and I mean, I haven't seen the movie, so I have no context of what everything is. But just, just the look and the craftsmanship that went into it looks amazing. But if I was to choose a Necto one, I have to go with the original. So that's my only, like I guess, nitpick. But other than that, if you're a big fan of the afterlife, and you have the money and the space. I would say get this definitely. I don't think there's a negative about it that I can think of, other than space. 
Yeah, um, just to echo what everybody says, um, you know, I know we use, or you use the word shrink ray for head sculpts and the other stuff sometimes, but this is like a legit shrink ray for um, this car uh, from the movie. I did see the movie. It's fantastic. If you haven't seen it, you're doing yourself a disservice. Um, it's very, very entertaining, very well done, very thoughtfully done. So um, the weathering super on point. Um, this thing is huge. I haven't obviously seen this, but I have seen the, the uh, original Ecto-1 in person, and it is ginormous, like way bigger than you think it is. So um, the 1700 does make sense. It's too expensive for me. I, I love Ghostbusters, but I don't know if I $1,700 love it. So I'll probably uh, not be getting this, but um, I'm glad the, you know, people out there who this is their, their franchise that they fell in love with and all that have an opportunity to get this. Um, I do wish they would come out with the figures um, for this because, yeah, I mean, I know this is a centerpiece, but at least for me, you know, if I'm getting a vehicle, I like to display it with, you know, people from that franchise like the DeLorean I have the the figures from that so um yeah but you know ultimately if, if this is all they ever do I mean this is you know <laughs> it, it, it will be you'll be fine and you'll be happy with it for sure um so yeah uh, they knocked it out of the park on this one for sure uh with everything so how many forward to it and, yeah how many uh main characters would be in this because I thought there was like the original guys right and then like a bunch of new kids wouldn't like if, i think i think if you, you were expect? based on the film i think there's four key characters that actually wear the yeah. the ghostbusters uniform and then i think if you wanted to i don't want to spoil anything but you there you could also some of the originals did make appearances in the film so you could also i don't think they would get that into the line where they'd make like seven eight figures for it but yeah. You know, I think as a max, probably, you know, then Paul Rudd's character was pretty big in the film, and so was the mom, which I, I don't think they'd make those. But, I mean, you'd be looking at, if they went the full Monty, like 10 figures, but I think four is the absolute minimum. Maybe just the brother and sister for two, but I think I think four would probably be the uh, the most likely. Yeah, I agree. The four kids, I think, would be the, uh, uh, the ones that they would do if they did anything. Let's put it that way, so... Um, yeah, we'll see. They haven't, uh, the, the original figures are great, so I hope they, they knock those out of the park too, but yeah. Completely agree. Um, I just want to show this photo here. Like, this thing is fucking huge. Like, Zach's a pretty big dude, like, height-wise, and when you look at people holding this thing, like, it's absolutely massive. Um, Gigi's saying if you could use it as a coffee table. I've seen some people that have, like, glass coffee tables that are, like, two-tiered. They'll put it on the like beneath the first tier and you're able to uh, display it like that. Um, I love that it comes with a little RC drone too. I think that's absolutely awesome. Uh, now Hot Toys made waves this weekend with their Peacemaker announcement. This one's 275 releasing May to July, 2023. And I will say first and foremost, I love that they went with joints on this figure. I know that's a hot take. I know a lot of people don't like it, but if you're giving us a figure that has an expressive portrait and just like I haven't seen the show, so I don't know for sure, but knowing what I know of this character from Suicide Squad, he's not really just standing there doing nothing. He's fucking going out there and, you know, giving a little taste of freedom and peace to the bad guys. So I think if you were to give this character a seamless body, it would just be an absolute nightmare. Now, I think where they did make the mistake is it's not, I don't think it's bulky enough. John Cena's a pretty big dude, and even here. This just doesn't look that, you know, that that ripped. I think the portraits are pretty silly. I think the metal on the helmets is really terrible. This looks like, you know, to put it in relation, like I think this is like Beskar Mando V1. And I think people now are looking for that chrome Beskar yeah. Mando V2 you know, you know what I'm talking about being like that that, that metallic Actual look. Chrome yeah. yeah, and especially in the show, his helmet is definitely like mirror finish chrome. Like this this to me, I think like is just really bad. And I'll be honest, like I know a lot of people say, Well, they never give us expressive sculpts. I think it's great they give us one. I don't really think we needed to have two portraits here. I think a neutral and an expressive would have been great. You know, if, I guess if the tongue was a thing, maybe have a little magnet in the tongue. I think Venom uh, uses a system like that, but uh, I I think there's a lot going for this figure. 
but I think there's a lot that just needs to be tweaked. Even the eagle. The eagle just looks really janky. Like, if you go to Hobby Lobby, you'll find nicer eagles in the yeah. aisle for $5. This... You can go to those, like, science stores and get nicer eagle toys. Yeah, it's like yeah. coming, like, Schleich eagles... or Schleich. Uh, yeah, 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 there you go with the goats. This, it, it's like both too narrow and like too upright. It just looks really weird. I, I really don't understand. Like, it's almost like they saw an eagle once and then sculpted from memory and never looked at another eagle well, reference again. You know, that's a freedom eagle, man. They don't have those in China. That's, wow. maybe that's the issue. <laughs> uh, Dean, what do you, uh... Uh, Mario's saying it's only one portrait and the tongue is magnetized. Maybe maybe I'm wrong. The picture's yeah, sure. Well, because it's two different helmets as well. Let me check. Maybe I'm uh, maybe I'm goofing here. So I don't know if it's and a swap out face and swap out like helmet part, because one has that blue stripe and the other one doesn't. Let's check it out. So unless it's two whole different sculpts, I don't know. Cause that's uh, it's, okay, two, I'm, there's, Mario there's is two tongues too. There is one attachable tongue. Okay. You also get one helmeted head with one interchangeable chrome okay. helmet. So okay. I guess the helmet just lifts up. Either way, I really wish they gave us a neutral portrait because that... Yeah. I don't know. I think it's cool, but I think... Like everyone's saying, oh, he did that one thing at the... You know, this one scene and... I don't know. I feel like I don't think he's doing this all the time in the show. Good right. Point. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty much exactly with you. I don't have the figure. I think it looks great other than that. Um I hope you get his Desert Eagle like proper. I'm I know they have that weird ah. thing about showing it. Um I don't remember him I mean I didn't see the show, so I don't know if the sword is like a big deal. But um from what I have seen I mean, that's about as much as I could expect to come with the figure. It's, I don't expect, like, Deadpool, right, where he's got a fucking arsenal behind him. So, I don't, I, again, I don't hate this. I think it's really cool. Uh, I would also prefer a, just a regular John Cena face. But, yeah, I think it's a nice release. Yeah, I, uh, you know, I, I get the uproar. Um behind the figure i guess uh but at the same time i i don't see it i mean i, I think the screaming head sculpt i i have seen the show or at least i i think i'm like four episodes into it i think it's eight episode season so i'm halfway through um he's a crazy motherfucker so having the screaming sculpt and and doing all this stuff is is makes sense for the character um the detachable tongue it's silly you know it's it's not the best um but i think it's you know, if you wanted to have a very unique figure on your shelf, um, I think this would definitely uh, fit that bill. I do wish that they would have given us a, um, a standard sculpt, just, you know, because, I mean, if you just want to do a museum pose or or whatever, it does make sense to have that, too. So, um, of course, they would have. But, you know, ultimately, I think since they added the joints and all that stuff, and I do agree with you, Zach, I like that they added joints for this character specifically. Um, so you could do some crazy poses with this and the tongue sticking out or just the open mouth might actually work um in this situation so i don't hate it it's fine uh the eagle definitely too small uh his name's eagly i believe in the show so definitely too small um i doubt they'll fix it but you know it is what it is uh you could put it in the back for some forced perspective or something like that so um yeah other than that i agree with you as well zach i do wish he was a bit bulkier uh, for some reason hot toys they just don't do a bulky body except for that hellboy figure that they did but um, they need to they need to get some bulkier boys for him and for Drax and for other people like that. So, but yeah, ultimately, I mean, it's, it's not something I'll probably get, but I, I guess I can see some of the some of the you know hate for it. But you know, they're giving us something different and it's something unique and it's you know not for me. But you know, if people love love him, hey, they can have a figure of him. So good for them. How about you, Danny? Dude, I love this movie. Or... I'm only maybe seven episodes in. I have one more episode, I believe. But I'm loving this series so far. And I don't know. I kind of think it looks... I mean, it fits. I think this is a good figure. It fits It fits him. The only thing is, yeah, he's. he seems a little smaller. He should be a bulkier guy. The arms should have more definition. The shoulders. The helmet doesn't really bother me too much for some reason. I think it looks pretty decent. And the Eagly... E or is it eagly? I think it is. He yeah. looks pretty. 
Jesus, he kind of looks like he kind of looks like that in the in the show. Like he's like a, you know, he's like a weird, you know, like they're trying to make him kind of humanized a little bit, but he is an eagle. So yeah, kind of, I think it, it, does he fly like yeah. that though? Look at the way he's flying, bro. He looks fucking stupid, bro. It looks like he's sitting down, but his wings are out. Yeah, but that's just yeah. they're just plugging in the wings and out, right? Yeah, but this is Hot Toys. This is like the number one figure company should in the they world, give you that... like two separate eagles give me two fucking eagles bro does it look small to you too danny is it actually supposed to be bigger yeah eagles are fucking huge bro yeah that especially looks... bald eagles i haven't seen the show but that looks tiny yeah it kind of looks a little bit smaller now that i'm flipping through them <laughs> like if that's the actual size of it that's fine but i mean i'm not picking this up maybe that's why i'm being so lenient on it but i think if you were a fan i think this would be a pretty good pretty good choice i know wow. eddie was a huge fan of this show it would have been interesting to hear what he would have had to say he probably wouldn't have gotten it anyways because he's trying not to do one six but, but I, I know he was super big into the show what were you saying danny oh yeah i forgot to say i do agree that there should be probably a relaxed face also yeah it's <laughs> one of you guys called it goofy as hell it does kind of look goofy as hell uh with the tongue so and everything stupid <laughs> that's the face that vd makes dude that's why fucking... <laughs> I, mean, I mean maybe you know maybe some I'd motherfucker's like gonna put the put a fice and dong next to that face <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, yeah. but it but he does the stuff in the show though that's the thing i know that i know yeah that it, it, maybe i'd lighten up on it if i saw the show but um is it sig? I I I guess I sh won't ask this, but you know what this body reminds me of? I I don't know if it's the same one or not, but this buck reminds me of Punishers from the Netflix TV show that they made years back. Because when I opened up that figure, that was one of my favorite figures for the longest time. Love that thing. I still do. I eventually sold mine because I'm. I thought honestly, Hot Toys is gonna reissue it, and they still haven't. So jokes on me, but um they that as soon as i took that figure out the first thing that stood out to me was how skinny the forearms and biceps like what you called out zach looked it drove me nuts with that guy and i know bernthal isn't super big like or he's a lot smaller than john cena obviously so it's probably even worse with that but yeah i it it stands out definitely when you have a figure that you're expecting them to be kind of a big bulky muscular guy it kind of sucks when you see that they have like string bean arms because i'll be honest the pictures for that punisher make those arms look better than it is in person when it did when i had it in person i thought they were string bean arms compared to what i was expecting for sure you know dylan's an og collector when he calls a body a buck what a legend um <laughs> so there is a bit of controversy dean touched on it but a lot of people are saying that supposedly for what it's worth uh, this is a rumor. We have un unconfirmed this rumor, but it's a uh, non-removable pistol that the pistol is actually molded into oh, the, oh, the holster. Allegedly. Yeah. Hang on. Let me say it again. Allegedly. Now, I don't think that's the case. If you look at the axe holding hand, there's a tiny little trigger on that finger, little trigger finger. You can see it right there. So I think... It, I don't think it's going to be glued in. I think they're just really not advertising it as being removable, probably to get around that licensing thing. But I'm almost certain that once you get it in hand, that right axe holding hand is going to fit real nicely on that pistol. Um, but yeah, Dean, it does go back to the whole licensing and whatnot. Uh, speaking of big muscular guys, look at what came in the mail today. Look at that. Oh, Freddie Mercury. You love to see it. Sexy. Jesus Christ. Um, yeah, Dylan Mercury. Uh, wow. Now, you. the Jazz <laughs> Inc. Batwing, uh, Yost put up the final, wow. I don't know what you want to call these, but they're sort of like the the product is done, you can order it now, photos uh, of the 1989 Batwing. This is $2,500, releasing June 2023. Definitely a bit of uh, sticker shock on the price there, but this is... This isn't, I believe, when he first put this up, it's not like a traditional run. I think it's just like each one is, you know, made from scratch. 
and uh, it's more of a bespoke type service than you know something that Hot Toys might do, where they're doing hundreds of the same vehicle and just assembly lining every single one. Um, so the Batman does fit inside the the Batwing, and uh, I mean it looks beautiful. I think Yost is a very talented painter, and um, I think the stuff that they put out is is really at another level. A uh, little bit of a price tag to swallow, but uh, yeah, I think I think the fact that they're now fully licensed by uh, Warner Brothers and DC, I'm really excited for the things that they do and and sort of the material and references that they'll have access to. Uh, what do you think about it, Dean? Sorry, my monitor was being weird. Um, yeah, this thing looks stunning. Um, I I completely agree with you about the now that they're licensed, the um like the blueprints they can get to make sure these things are spot on accurate. Because I mean, even before he was doing crazy work, going to like the RPF, getting photos. You know, people that visited maybe like the actual prop took some reference shots. So I know he was doing his due diligence, but now it's probably exponentially more accurate. So um, this is really cool. <laughs> I'm not a fan of the price, uh, but I, I I mean, the sheer size of this thing, it's like, okay, I get it. Um, I think it's incredible. I just a... Uh, uh, engineering marvel in terms of a toy you know what i mean um i'm sure someone's mad that i called it a toy but um yeah this thing's this thing's absolutely crazy um i was never a huge fan of those movies but i did always love the bowing because it looks so cool um so yeah this is this is really really cool to see i like it yeah, I've been a fan of jazz, uh, you know, used for a long time. Um, well, I mean, we all have, but uh, when he got that license, it definitely seemed to step up uh, his game as far as his DC goes. I mean, really, everything he does is great, um, but this is fucking phenomenal. Um, just the size and the scale it is, $2,500 is a boatload of money, you know, don't get me wrong. But, I mean, even compared to look at the the 1700 bucks for the Ecto-1. Um, so, you know, and this is huge compared to that, just based on everything the the wings and everything so um yeah i mean it's great that they make it so you can fit the figures in um you have to be pretty ballsy to flex that suit in there with how old it is but um you know maybe there's an inevitable reissue john's not here we can say that word so um yeah i think the painting detail is awesome the detail in the cockpit is awesome um yeah this is a great release i i obviously will not be picking it up but uh, it's fantastic for those, you know, Keaton and, and Batman lovers out there. Um, I did love the movies. You know, I was this came out when I was seven years old. Um, so I saw it a little bit after it came out, you know, maybe when I was 10. So maybe after Returns came out and um, yeah, just this is all all fantastic. Um, I'm glad that people have the opportunity to buy this. And I'm glad that uh, Jazz Inc. is putting stuff like this out and like the 66 Batman Batmobile and all the other great stuff he's doing. So um definitely happy for those people that can get this yeah which is use is making a lot of the bat people very happy putting a bunch of putting a bunch of stuff bunch of vehicles out for them i have questions about these do you know if those missile pods come out a little didn't they come out in the, the movie did they kind of like pop out a little bit don't know off the top of my head and does it have the scissor thing in the front to cut the balloon the balloon oh, cables yeah, yeah. let's double check because that'd be cool if they if you included that i thought there was pictures with the missiles i can't remember yeah exactly. there was yeah just google it bro just kidding uh, let's click. check let's check well people ask questions that they don't that you could just yeah they do have the scissors right there <laughs> yeah sweet Look at that, Danny. now you can get it dude now you the can cat, get it catling gun that's i sick. might have to but yeah, this looks amazing, which is my favorite word to say. <laughs> you wow. couldn't. That's your ask. favorite word. I don't think that's Danny's favorite word. I was gonna use phenomenal. 
Danny's favorite word is clitoris, guys. <laughs> oh, damn, right? <laughs> He's never been able to find it, so how would he know that? How dude? dare you? Oh, wow. He's got to pay for it. <laughs> Danny's yeah, this... all about the scissor action, according to Mark. Yeah. Sorry, Dylan. <laughs> Worth it. <laughs> yeah, this um, this is about as good it like you won't probably find a better Batwing out there. Like if this is one of your if this is your movie, your Batman, your everything for like Batman, this you gotta get this. I think John was pretty excited about it. Eddie was too. I I don't know how they could he could potentially do this better. He I know for a fact everyone says he does the cockpits really well and that's the only thing you th that looks like he could skimp on and i don't think he's going to from that picture so yeah i it's pretty awesome and it by the way it's also quite a bit cheaper than the batwing from bvs that he released like i think that one yeah is listed on his website for 3500 bucks so almost a thousand dollars cheaper than that but this thing's gonna be pretty big too, right? For just the, like the space, yeah. the space that it'll take up to put it somewhere 45, 45 inches by fifty two by fourteen. God damn! Yeah, that's enormous. That's sick. So, yeah, that'll that it, this would be pretty awesome. I would love it, but I think I'm just gonna have to <laughs> obviously always deal with space issues. So. I don't know. I I wonder what he's if he's gonna dive into the new Batman movie. That would be awesome to see what he could do with that car. Dean, would he's, you get that thing? He's hinted that he is going to be doing the Batmobile. Yeah. What would I get what? The new Batmobile from the movie if if Jazz Inc. does it. I'm I'm not there on Batman yet. I'm getting there, but I don't think I would spend that kind of money on that. Dean, you gotta get we'll one of see. these, then you can spend that kind of money, baby. <laughs> if he does, if I, if he does a twelve Look at scale how good of it, this looks. Oof. If he I'll does a twelve scale of it, I'll for sure get it. The twelve scale, the twelve scale <laughs> one is like only four hundred and fifty bucks, I, I think, four or five hundred bucks. I'd get the six scale one for like the shitty Batman toy. Which one were those, Zach? What brand was that? Jax? That was, no. um, I don't want to say wicked cool toys. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. The one that we talked about a few months ago, or a few weeks yeah. ago, rather. Yeah. Um, Danny, real quick, let me see that ruler again, real quick. Um, uh, Something's going to happen. Do you want me to put it at 45? <laughs> Why is there a mark on the three? Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I fucking love you, Danny. <laughs> God, Jesus. <laughs> I love you, Daddy. Uh, next up, Sideshow Collectibles is a man with no name. Uh, Blondie or Cowboy G. Uh, 275, a bit up there, October to December 2022. This dropped after I made the show sheet, so we're just going to pull pictures straight from Sideshow. Um, I, got, I got high hopes for this, but I have one complaint. And I'm going to go through these photos first. We can all look at them together. And then we'll talk about it, but um, yeah, this is it's pretty nice. I'm not gonna lie, I'm I'm very impressed. I think Sideshow uh, did a wonderful job on the outfit. I think they did a great job with these hands. They're not. I think the thing that bothers me is when you have characters with very specific accessories, especially revolvers. If you look at the Django that came out, the third party one, to hold a revolver. Is a different grip than holding a modern pistol. Yeah, they're they're very... they're a little bit smaller, and I love how if you look there at that middle photo, how that hand is in that revolver. That's perfect. Same with the rifle. M the modern hands they just look terrible with the with the uh, revolvers, and they're just kind of like generic hands. Um, but this looks really good. I think my only complaint is he's too clean. You need to take this guy and throw him in the dirt a little bit, get him a little bit dirtied up. But, uh, God damn, the portrait looks good. Some people were saying it's a bit off, but, I mean, that looks pretty fucking good. The outfit looks great. I mean, this is this is a figure that, you know, high-end customizers have been taking on for years, that companies like Redmond have been making for years, and it's great to finally see 
a officially licensed company like just look at this fucking vest that texture in it yeah. the underlay of the fur like this this is so fucking nice the inlay on the on the pistol of the snake just a little touch of weathering i think would do this figure wonders but god damn this thing looks good uh <laughs> yeah i've been wanting and i almost bought the redmond the other day because they did a second version when it's a lot nicer um because this is just a figure i've wanted on my shelf for you know ages and uh i'd prefer dirty harry but just a clean east you know what i mean and blondie is such a cool character and those movies are so iconic um that this again is just something i've always wanted on my shelf and i was talking to a guy here in town picking up the redmond one and when this got announced i was super excited now i'm a little hesitant because zach is giving them praise and this is just prototype photos so until we see what it actually looks like i'm just gonna hold off because sideshow does what sideshow does best and drops the ball at the goal line so uh, we'll see we'll see how it turns out yeah um yeah i wasn't necessarily interested in this one last week but after seeing these you know prototype pictures it definitely looks striking um the everything looks really well tailored um the guns look fantastic hopefully they would be die cast i don't know if the sideshow does die cast stuff but um just everything else the poncho the hat the cigar you know everything he's got just looks like a man in a suit you know um i think the uh the head sculpt is definitely good um you know we'll have to see the final pictures but i definitely see clint eastwood there um it's a little bit you know exaggerated maybe um but you know uh, you know with some touch-ups or whatever it might look better uh, again and we'll see uh when the final prototype comes but yeah you, what is this 245 or 275 i can't I uh 275 yeah yeah it's pretty steep but i mean for what you get and for what it is um we'll see i think i'm with dean i'm gonna wait till i see the final prototypes or the final product uh before i make any decision i uh, won't be pre uh pre-ordering it but uh yeah, I mean, I think it's a fantastic looking figure. And if you're a Clint Eastwood fan or a fan of Westerns or anything like that, I, I don't see how you can go wrong with this for sure. Um, so, yeah, well, it's uh, cautious optimism because, like Dean says, sideshow going to sideshow. So um, definitely ca cautious optimism for sure. Yeah, this looks pretty good. I mean, I'm, I'm a sucker for Western figures also. So, But I'm kind of holding off for William Money. Hopefully they'll make... That version of that kind of Clint Eastwood character. I know that guy. The Duck of Death. But um, the only thing is, do you think it could be weathered more? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. That's the only thing. I he, guess he looks mythic. like brand new clothing, but in the yeah. film, like. Especially for Western. Yeah, some of the uh, figures, I'm trying to remember which ones, but they do like like a simulated sweat effect. I, I think that would go a long way towards adding a bit of realism to this figure. Uh, and the hands are super clean. Like the hands, I, I just think like literally just take this figure, dump it in some mud, dump it in some dirt and sand, and then clean it off as best as you can. And you'll, you'll get a nice yeah. patina. For the people that maybe, don't have like, nice patina. Maybe not, maybe not so much as a hot take, but, wouldn't it be better for you to do that yourself than have them do it and every figure look exactly the same? That's that's what I was gonna say. I was gonna say it's easier to weather and do those things than it is to like not be satisfied with it and then be yeah. mad they did it and have yeah, because you know weathering when it's like stamped on always looks kind of trash. Right. So that's that's what I was gonna say. Yeah. I think the head is... sculpt looks pretty good too. Like yeah. You gotta take in mind this is a younger <clears throat> Clint Eastwood mm -hmm. too. And one thing from those movie from those movies, it's been a long time since I've seen it. I'll admit I don't remember them. So that oh, I'm pointing at the screen like an idiot. <laughs> Second yeah, row are. middle picture, Zach. That I, I was gonna time. say it almost has like a stylized, like cartoon look to the way that it's filmed, like the editing style. Mm -hmm. In some pic in some times during the movie and they somehow kind of match that on the figure to where it's like weird coloring almost but they do it well i think 
and hopefully that continues on like in his face is what i'm talking about where it's kind of almost like a reddish accented <laughs> zach gonna treat this like a lady of the night <laughs> jesus christ <laughs> sam says whether with chewing tobacco rub it on there hell yeah <laughs> um yeah i think this one this does look really good and i, I yeah you guys have the point of being um weary about yeah weary about trusting sideshow sean you asked if they do die cast they do they're wolverine figures i don't i don't know for sure about the new ones but i know their old sideshow comic book ones they did were metal so i know they've they've used it before the wolverine uh, the claws were metal so i know they've used it and there's not a lot of great zoomed in pictures on the gun but like you said that you kind of mentioned it zach that looked really good yeah, I'm Both excited guns. for the for the Spencer rifle and the revolver. Yeah, that's the one I was talking about that I had. Those are metal, oh, right? Yeah. yeah, they are metal. Yeah. yeah. I want that figure so oh. fucking bad when it came out. I went to a store to window shop it, and I, it took everything in me to not purchase it. I love it, dude. Decision. It's it's still great. I love it. I didn't terrible. I didn't care about that thing until yeah, I went to a comic book shop and they took took it down and showed me and I'm like, oh man, I gotta have that thing and I enjoyed it for a while but had to slim it up. I know, I tried to buy it from you, you didn't sell it to me. Uh (laughs) next up, Storm Collectibles getting back into the one six scale game. Uh they announced a Scorpion and Sub Zero, and I'm very excited for this now. Um their their one twelfth scale stuff tends to be a bit overly stylized in my opinion and i really appreciate that these um appear to be fairly normal proportioned uh scorpion and sub-zero figures um i'm super excited this was the only two photos that i could find but um i know marco bless his heart he's at the batman premiere right now texting us in the middle of the movie um he's i think if i remember correctly He's always wanted uh, these characters in one six scale, so yeah, I know he's got to be really excited. Show. Yeah, it's <laughs> so crazy. He, he's got to be really excited, and um, I know another hot take again, but I I gotta say for a character like this, characters rather like this, I think it makes so much sense to not go seamless. You know, you're never gonna have these guys standing straight up and down on the shelf. You're gonna want to put them in these dynamic poses. Um, I think. I think this is definitely the way to do it, and uh, if the price points are fairly decent, I think this. I think I might have to pick these up to be honest, because they're one twelfth scale Scorpion and Sub Zeros, the first versions. I mean, that's like statue money to buy them now. Oh yeah, they're sold. like five hundred bucks. Easy. Easy, easy. Also, sweet Gigi in the chat. Marco's watching the Batman movie, and we got Gigi in the chat. How dare he not take sweet Gigi to, to Batman premiere? Um, Wait, Gigi's Dean, not watching Batman. She's That's watching CW, up, which is much better. We love you, Gigi, you absolute angel. She's going to uh, put Dean pancake the... to bed. There we go. Dean the Dream Martin, what do you think about this? Bro, these are so fucking cool. I, for a half second, I was like, why are we talking about Storm Collectibles? Is this because Dylan's on the show? Like, what the fuck are we doing here? And then I read the six guy action figures. I was like, bro, no fucking way. These are fucking cool, man. I'm I'm with you. I might have to pick these up. Uh, one, I mean, come on, Sub Zero and Scorpion, like so iconic. One of the first games I played on the Genesis with me. I was always the younger brother, so I was play player two. And it was this and Sonic the Hedgehog, man. And uh, honestly, I don't know why they, my parents let us play this game because it was fucking brutal. Um, I know this is Mortal Kombat 11, but like just to have those characters on the shelf, you know, and um, they look good. They're like updated enough that they don't look so cheesy, but they're not so over stylized that they look cheesy as well. Ah, man, these are cool. And I, I think you hit the nail on the head with the seamless body thing. You're never just going to have them standing around. So that would that would be a detriment. Um, I really like that they're using their articulation just scaled up. They're not just using generic bodies. Yes. It's like their um, joints. I think that's really cool to see. 
um yeah dude i i love these more than i probably should these are very cool yeah i'm digging these too i mean they're very these are like the two most iconic characters from mortal kombat and i yeah i i don't mind the 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 articulation joints on the, the arms also i think it lends well and you're gonna want to put these in these crazy poses and like i can see so many people wanting to use these for pose wars but um also a nice wow addition is i guess the swords like i'm not very familiar with with scorpion having a sword so it's like a nice nice touch that they're adding weapons which i don't remember in the games because i only played the very first version I don't remember them ever having weapons other than the yeah the, the newer ones the uh grabber thing yeah um, the newer mortal Kombat's definitely get into the whole weapon thing so oh, okay. i think that's like a newer thing but that's a nice touch i think reese with the comment of the night says i would love a reptile too absolutely It'd be fucking awesome oh, i can see them going the whole nine yards with all of them. Mm -hmm. if they do well yeah that that's what i was gonna say i i know you mentioned that they're sometimes come across as overly stylized i don't think so i think they just do a good job of capturing <clears throat> video games well because that's most most of their licenses because i have the bane from mortal kombat that they did 12 scale my biggest issue with storm for the small stuff is how big they fucking are they're like um <clears throat> i so mezco and mofex or yeah Mezco, Mofex are pretty oversized for being 112 scale. With Bandai really only being the main, really only being um, like the only one around anymore that's just doing actual 112 scale. But Storm like makes Mofex and Mezco even look small. They're like, they should be closer to almost 7 inch scale figures. So I wonder how that translates to their six scale figures. I was surprised too, like Dean said, that um, they were doing a one six scale figure. I'm like, I have they ever done that? And then I completely forgot they've done like six figures. Like Muhammad Ali, Mike Tyson and stuff. I completely forgot about all those that they've done over the years. So yeah, I hope these do well. I I think like you guys said, if they it almost like that's a good oh was that you dean or danny that said that they pretty much just made their joints and everything larger on how they do it with with their smaller stuff and if they do that it's a home run they do a great job with that and yeah all of their mortal Kombat shit and 112 scale does really well as soon as it sells out it goes for <clears throat> stupid prices probably more than what this will retail for so the one thing though be careful that I'm pretty sure if things do well, they reissue. So John's not on here to set off with that, but I'm pretty sure they, they do. Uh, but yeah, this is cool. This is a game changer and I'd love to for storm to get into one six scale and give people competition. Um, I'm pretty sure I think it was Marco last week that said uh, he of everything he wants, he wants a scorpion one six scale figure, I think. So I think he pretty much willed these into existence because I think they dropped the day after he said that. So, um, yeah, I I like these a lot. I don't own any storm uh, per se, um, but I've seen them a ton at cons and, you know, friends houses and stuff like that. I think they're great little figures. Um, you know, I these and six scale are going to be awesome with the real fabrics that looks like uh the swords etc um i'm definitely glad that they just upscaled their dynamic bodies for six scale um because you're gonna want you know this guy to be fighting sub-zero or whatever they make down the line so you're not gonna want you know any fights and bodies or anything like that that are gonna tear so i'm glad they did it like that they just upscaled it all um and yeah definitely intrigued um let's we'll see what the price point is um but i'm glad um that they're coming out with two at the same time you know with sub-zero and scorpion um, cause it would be kind of lame if they came out with one or the other, then you had to kind of guess if you're going to get the other. Um, so the fact that they're releasing two is, is pretty awesome of them. So, um, yeah, I'm definitely excited for the line. I love Mortal Kombat. That was my Mortal Kombat three, Mortal Kombat three ultimate and Mortal Kombat two were the things that I played probably the most in the arcade. When I go to Wonderland arcades, it was nickel games and I'd sit there and play it all day long. Um, so yeah, super excited about this. And, uh, 
yeah, video game figures are awesome. So I hope they continue to do it. And uh, yeah, I'm happy that they're bringing it out. Gigi says, if these are under $200, I will personally get Marco one. You'd love to see it. Uh, she says, give us a Fison body, though. So I don't. She's think obsessed really that, with Fison. I think I know she, you like... <laughs> she secretly wants them for reasons. Yeah, she um, wants the Fison dong. I'll have to get you one. <laughs> you don't tell someone's you? woman that way, bro. That's our best friend's right. wife, bro. How dare you? No, the accessories. The um, accessories. <laughs> okay. Someone's yeah, okay. got someone's got to make that meme of the guy looking away back when he's walking with the other girl. Oh yeah, Marco <laughs> being the guy that Gigi's walking with, and she's looking back at a Fison. Fison, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's a great idea. Someone photoshopped that. Um, yeah, they're. Uh, I think they're probably gonna be close to two hundred. I don't think they'll be at two hundred. Piron says they're one twelfth. They're above a hundred. Yeah, uh, they're stocks- high end. Yeah, Doc Smizzle says, hashtag cancel Dan- Danny and Gigi with a laugh. Ben Thomas, welcome for the first time Whoa. ever to collect Ben guys. Thomas? I thought wow. that was Trey Kennedy. What's going welcome, on? Welcome. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Can be okay. I want to make sure my levels are good, obviously, for, for the group. But yeah, Oh, God, just he's kidding. got the Zach treatment already. Yeah, all right, let's, let's do Zach's it. What do you think, ben? Zach's having an aneurysm. Yeah, get into the show, my guy. I know. I missed it. So I uh, I literally faked sick to get out of a work party to wow. make sure I got here in time. So, oh, my God. <laughs> what are they not doing? Yeah. Yeah. This is going to be live they're... on YouTube forever. Dude, when the hope... when the when the ox father calls, you 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 make Dude. you make it happen. Fucking the horn of Gondor, bro. And I went unread, so. That's right. Wow. <laughs> That's right. Oh, Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me, guys. It's awesome to be here. Definitely, uh, definitely stoked. I love these figures. Uh, these, to me, harken back to my early days of playing Sega Genesis and the original PlayStation. And man, I played the heck out of those games back in the day. And I've been craving a, a craving a suit that looks like those games. And you know, these these look fantastic. I mean, these hit me right in the feels. Uh, I love the the effects that they come with. I think those look great. For me, I do lose a little immersion uh, in the joints, 100%. I, I agree with Gigi on that there a little bit. I, I think, you know, Fison body would look pretty sweet. But again, then you start to lose that ability to pose it. And a Mortal Kombat figure has to be posed, right? I mean, at the end of the day, you can't have a Mortal Kombat figure, Sub-Zero, Scorpion, standing there in, in character pose or museum pose or however you want to talk about it. So that's, that's tricky. Um, but I think for the look of it, nails it nails it and for the price point 100 percent. i like you know i can see these in my collection for sure so i think this is a must buy if uh if you're uh if you're a mortal Kombat fan i know gg was saying to me the other day because i accidentally messaged her instead of marco i asked him what his favorite game was and i sent them the message to gg by accident uh but wow. she said her favorite game is uh is mortal Kombat or one of them and i mean that's that's pretty cool so there's a lot of people out there i think that'll be all over these guys Wow. Uh, I'm very excited. And uh, as we get more updates with prices and photos, we'll definitely be sure to share them. One, uh, go ahead, one go thing ahead. I forgot to say, too, their effects for 12 scale stuff are really awesome. And if they start to do well, I would expect they start doing that with one six scale. Like they have like some of their figures come with like split heads that like one of the weapons will fit perfectly in. If they do that with one six, that's. That's definitely pushing the needle for one six scale stuff for sure. I I hope they they do that. And if anyone's wondering, they're a proven company. They do they don't have many QC issues. They they're well done figures. They're high end, like we said. So they probably will be a little bit spendier, but don't be afraid to spend it if you want more. Yeah, love to see it. Um, and you know, like I can't stress enough, like their stuff when it. When it sells out, I mean, it gets real hot, and it's real hard to get. And Mortal Kombat is one of those lines where, you know, if, if the first two figures are Scorpion and Sub-Zero, and you're holding out because you don't care for those characters, and then they start releasing more classic bangers like Raiden and Baraka, like, you're going to have to, like, go back and pay top dollar for these. So definitely don't sleep on them. Dean, you know what else we shouldn't sleep on? Our sponsor. That's right, guys. We want to thank our sponsor, for tonight's episode guys um one six corners mission is to provide the best figures and collectibles for their customers they offer great prices great packaging fast shipping and the best in the business customer service 
Um, guys, use code CW10, CW10 uh, to get 10% off all in-stock items, guys, while the show is live. Just want to, you know, say that again just so you don't forget. Uh, choose your figures, pay safely with PayPal, and leave the rest of them, guys. Check out 1-6 Corner right now. They are the best in the biz now. Our discussion for episode 205, Pimp Your Displays. So I'm in the process of moving. Uh, you obviously can't tell because nothing's moved in the background. But around the house, it is in full effect. I think we're moving the weekend of March 16th, if everything goes well. So um, for me, I think the office is going to be the last thing packed and the first thing unpacked. Uh, but I'm looking at the things I have and just kind of th- looking at what needs to be freshened up and I realize it's been a while that we've talked about um, really making kind of like normal shelves or bookshelves or even like the trusty Detoff and making them into really nice collectible spaces. And I mean, we get questions, Dean, all the time, like, hey, what do you use for lighting? Or can we see it on OSR a lot? Like, you know, if I'm lighting this Detoff, anyone have any recommendations? So I figured we'd do it. It's been a few years. So let's talk about it. So. In my collection room, I have a few different types of displays. I have this cabinet by a company called Tillum. Uh, It's their Aberdeen China cabinet. Mine is the one with the white background. They also have it in like a wood backdrop. Um, And uh, it's basically just like a Billy book bookcase with doors. It's just a little deeper. It's uh, 15 inches deep as opposed to, I think like 11.5 on the Billy. And I needed that depth because at the time, I had a one six scale job of the hut. He was quite a big boy, so he didn't fit in the billy. Uh, the next shelves that I have are Detoffs. So we all know and love these pretty much. I would imagine most of us got started with Detoffs at one point or another, or at least owned one. Uh, and for both of those, uh, these are the pieces of equipment that I use. So uh, you can see on the LE Pro LED lighting strips, I've bought these 11 times. I have 11 of these sets of lights in my room and they are really, really well done. I, at one point, I think, you know, months without turning them off, zero problems. Um, they come in cool white. They come in warm white. Uh, the rolls that I typically buy, they're the 16.4 feet versions. That's enough for a detoff. Uh, but if you want to light, I guess, two detoffs with one strip, which would be kind of weird, you could do the 32 foot long version. Uh, and then weather stripping. So if you look at detoffs, they're not particularly built to keep dust out. Uh, so I use uh, heavy duty. Uh, weather strips uh, and depending on how you build your detail for the type of cabinet they sell different thicknesses so this is the large gap version they also sell it for medium gap and it's just like a piece of vinyl that you it's kind of meant to obviously seal uh, the detail from getting dust and it won't be 100% dust proof but uh, Dean I think you own one of my original detoffs that I had done this to and how is that the dust seal held up for you um I mean, honestly, it hasn't. Oh, how dare you? Um, yeah, I don't know. I just have really terrible luck with my detoffs where, like, the doors, I have difficulty with the doors. What do you mean? Like, the hinges are breaking or what? No, like, like when they shut, like, it's so hard to get them open again that they'll, sh- like, shake violently when I finally get them open. Oh and I'm just afraid of, like them shattering either when i pull on the door or otherwise so i i keep them cracked open yeah i i don't know i even i mean we're gonna see my display here in a second like there's no reason that should be happening because they're not uneven you know what i mean so i don't know what the problem is yeah um that is weird um i don't i haven't ever had that problem but you could have you tried adjusting the the hinges like where the door cl- well, I feel like hinge. it's the magnets like the magnets are like too strong wow that like keep never... it shut I don't know if I should like put some foam between them or what but maybe uh so I also use the better homes and garden four cube displays so those are these ones right here uh they're they're quite sturdy when you take out the the center and the horizontal braces uh and I use uh from the same company LE LED puck lights. They also come in daylight and warm white. Uh I pretty much do cool white for everything. Um it just looks better. Unfortunately, when I ordered these a few years ago, they only carried it in warm white. So I, when I'm moving, that's going to be one of the first things that I replace. 
uh, but these are very easy to install as well. So uh, these strips here, they're just a big uh, roll of LEDs and you just peel the, the backing off and you can just tape it directly to the glass. Uh, with these, they have 3M on the back or you can take the, the light out and then drill into the puck itself into the uh, the wood there. How... So I've... Oh, sorry, go ahead. I mean, go ahead. <laughs> I was I was just gonna ask. Well, I didn't want you to move on from those strips because I was gonna ask how do yeah. those how well do those stick for you? Because I've had issues with oh, them sticking. I've so okay. So I did before I found this brand. I okay. did order a different brand that had a lot of problems with sticking. With this particular brand, you know your mileage may vary, but like if you clean the shelves well, use a little bit of alcohol where you're gonna put the glass uh, the strips on the glass. I've had zero issues. In fact. Sometimes the adhesive is too strong and I've actually ripped the, um, like where the strip begins to get power. I've ripped that off and I've had to re-solder that before. So these work excellently because this is the same strips that I have on that shelf right there uh, in the, the Aberdeen in the back. And then here, you can't see it, but there's strips over here, strips on the detonf. And then throughout my house, I have these strips and I've, I've never had them fail. Um, on the back of my wooden desk, I have a, a set of these strips as well. The only thing that didn't stick particularly well is right where the 3M starts right at the beginning. I put a drop of super glue on the wood and it's held ever since. So um, your mileage may vary, but with this particular brand, like we've even used these for giveaways in the past on CW and I've really never heard uh, any complaints. Um, Have you thought about upgrading to the Luke light thing to so you can angle the, the light towards your figures at all? Or are you just like sticking it kind of in the front or however you stick it on? Um, what was that that you said? A, a what type of light? I think it's called Luke light or something like that. Um, uh -huh. it's basically like a, it's like a aluminum or plastic bracket. I don't know what it is, but it goes on where it sticks on the top and then it's like a 45 a degree angle. angle yeah. Where you put the, the led strip. So it shoots it towards the figure and hides it. It's kind of like the, it's basically the module case lights. Yeah. It's like a little thing that they shoot towards the figure. I have never used that to be honest. I like when I first got into this thing, like there was not a lot of lighting tutorials out there. And so I just kind of picked, you know, one brand that didn't work out. Well, I picked a different brand and um, yeah, I guess Andres agrees that the lights are great, but I mean that I just stuck them straight to the glass all the way around the perimeter of the detoff and it works fabulously. Like I've never had any problems with it. Um, Switching to puck lights was kind of annoying because the light's more direct, but I mean, I've also didn't really have any problem with that particular brand. And then same with the bookshelves, which Dean actually owns now, but uh, same thing, just running the lights from the bottom corner up, across, down, and then either out the back or across again uh, with the same brand of lights. Those, those have worked really well. And I think when Dean moved them from my house to his, I think the lights did get damaged. But uh, generally speaking, like I, I fully stand by these lights. Like they're, really really good uh and if you are a fan of collecting weekly from a few years back you know that um i did try upgrading to garage shelving when i started getting into statues a few like a year ago year and a half ago unfortunately i was an idiot i didn't measure correctly and the shelf was too big for the space i wanted to put it in so i've finally got those out of storage my new house has a bit more space in the office so uh, i'll be using these in my next house but they were kind of like the boring um particle board surfaced wood so um you can actually buy a shelf drawer liner in black or white and i use that to cover the uh the mdf i know eddie recommended using fabric but with this stuff it's waterproof it's easy to clean easy to dust um and it's also easy to replace as well so i uh, i went this way and i in this picture here i'm still gluing them down but i just put a little bit of wood glue uh to glue them down just a bit and uh it's worked work pretty well. So um, those are some options I recommend for this shelf. I'm obviously going to be using puck lights because uh, putting strip lights through this, it would just be a little bit inconvenient. There, um, uh, on that, there's a tutorial. I, I'll have to find it and send it to you, but um, basically where you can make these look like module cases almost. Um, yeah, with acrylic yeah, you, and yeah, yeah I've you get seen some acrylic those. and all this stuff. Yeah, looks good. They look amazing. I'm yeah. tempted, but at that point, it's like I... I don't know that I'm really saving that much money. Like when I looked into yeah, the acrylic, acrylic is expensive, acrylic's expensive. depending on how yeah. thick you get. Like if you get some eighth inch or something like that, you, you'll save some money, but yeah, acry acrylic's not cheap. And, and to me, like as much as I want to do that, I personally feel like statues, 
like with six scale figures, I have a hard time wrapping my head around like, oh, these are going to be open air, right? <laughs> like I have this Batman on my desk and Dean the other day was like, yo, what'd you do with that Batman? I'm like, I don't want a Batman. It's literally sitting at my desk looking at me every day for like almost seven months. I forgot it was there. I'm, I am completely used to the idea of six scale behind glass. But for me, I don't like the idea of statues behind glass. It's really weird. I so for me, I'm I'm actually looking forward to getting some of my statues onto like an open air shelf. I, I just feel that they look better without glass glare uh, distracting from them. Um, so I have looked into that. It was a bit expensive, um, and I suck at wood projects. So making the frame to frame them, if that's part of the process, depending on the tutorial, that kind of made me a bit anxious, but. Um, it, I think it's funny that the meme has kindly come full circle and I'll finally be able to install these in the new house. So, um, I think that's all I had for my pit, my cabinet section showing off some of the tips and tricks that I recommend, but Dean, you have some cool things that you're working on in your living space. So let's talk about that. Yeah. So I moved, God, I guess it was almost a year, almost a year ago. I think in like four months, it'll have been a year. But uh, it's a slow operation. I had to, uh, this used to be a garage. You can see the garage door back there behind the detox. And uh, we converted it into a living space. So I was like, oh, I'm going to get my detox over here. This is an old picture. They, they look better now. Um, but uh, I wanted all, them off the ground. Um, just so like the figures that are on the bottom shelf aren't, so low you know you have a better look at them on the display so my sister and i built these out of just some wood um i went and bought like four pieces of wood cut them and then we just screwed them all together and they're they're heavy they're probably like about 100 pounds each uh there's two of them and they're uh a little a little longer than three feet so you could fit three detops on each one uh, so I have six detops when everything's said and done. Um, that's directly behind me right here. Um, and so slowly but surely, I'm, I, I don't know if you can see this big mound of boxes over here and behind the fourth detop. That's all figures that need to be put in here. Uh, I've started doing it, but it, I need to relight them because I damaged the lights. The same ones as Zach uses, they're fantastic. I... I had those lights on four detox going 24 hours a day for like three years. No problems. They're solid lights. Um, but um, in the move, I, I managed to damage them. So I have to relight them. Uh, and I'm waiting on my last two detox. So that'll be fun. Um, yeah, so that's, that's kind of what my detox look like. And then to the left of those is my, uh, oh, I think Zach may have forgot. Uh, Let me double check. Just go ahead and describe it. <laughs> I think you did two detail photos instead of the, I uh, saw that. But I have my, uh, the bookcases that Zach was talking about that I, I grabbed from him and one from Manny. Uh, they're just some generic, uh, they're from Walmart, yeah? He was on mute, but yeah, basically they're just generic yeah, book Target. Cases. Oh, Target. Okay. And uh, I just, you know, started loading my figures in there. And so I have my entire Robotech display on there. And uh, they look fantastic. I'm looking at getting up some more shelving around my desk. Here I have my statues behind me on my desk, but. My uh, streaming desk is separate from my like work desk, so they're okay over there. Uh, I see what the issue is. You put it in two separate chats. Oh, my bad. I'm sorry. There we go. You're right. I did. So that's my Robotech display. Um, just on bookcases, and then I keep the boxes on top because uh, they display very cool. And, uh, yeah, just... Uh, the bottom shelves are like some Star Wars and stuff. And then I don't keep anything on the very bottom because my dog will chew it. So wasted space there. But That um, cockpit still stands out. That's so cool. The, oh, thanks. Yeah, it looks yeah, great. I love that thing. Uh, bro, I found the six scale one for sale the other day for two grand. I almost bought it. But it was local pickup only in like Virginia. I was like, no. 
you hate to see it. Now, <laughs> but this is, Steph lives there. I was going to go get him. <laughs> this is a uh, Marco sent us this pic- picture of his. I believe these are Billy bookcases, but I wow. love the way he has the lights on the front of the frame facing inward. I'll be 100% honest, Marco. I'm probably going to steal this idea when I move. This is fucking genius, bro. Um, I never thought to do it like that. But, yeah, that's really clean. And uh, it lights his figures very well. Um, we also have some stuff from Dan the Man Lee. So tell us what you got going on, Danny. Well, that's fine. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just kidding. I was. <laughs> Bitch. Okay, get off whatnot, Danny. So I'm just, I just have mod cases. Like, I, I'm not a do-it-yourself type of guy. So I just bought them. Yeah, you are, built, bro. You know, put it myself. Wow, how dare you? <laughs> <laughs> so the main reason I bought these was because of the everything's enclosed. I don't have to deal with dust because you can see my old old system of displaying was just regular bookshelves, which is in the corner. And so I just love these. I mean, they're a little pricey. And you got to wait for the time, you know, the, the wait time. But I think they're well worth it. And I'm planning on getting more of these units for statues. So eventually I'm going to make all these into just one six. And then I'll have my statues in their own own uh, units. But um, I like the, the lighting, which is the similar to what, what uh, Sean was saying about the, the Luke lights. So they just kind of aim, aim in that 45 degree angle down, I guess. And then uh, I just use See- a... Gafting tape, I guess, grafters tape to, because some some of the plugs hang out, so you have to put them up. Everything's well hidden, like you can kind of see. There's like uh, cable cable holders, so everything can be hidden and and tucked away, for the most part. But the only downfall I think is the wires. All the lighting wires, like you can see in that picture, it's a mess. There's just so many, so I got to find a way to. To kind of just hide that in the future. Looks like she loves cave, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but, you might be able to get like a like an IKEA ottoman or something, Danny, that you can kind of slot out the back and yeah. slide it into, sit it in the I corner, so it's almost like something. a little bench seat. Hundred percent. I'll send Shauna your way. I'm sure she'll find something for you. Cool, nice. And then um, for the lighting, I also use the the Wemo uh, electric plugs, so you can just. I just use it on my app. Like it's an app on my phone, so I can turn on either manually on the actual actual uh, plugs, or you can do it on the the phone app. So I just use those. I don't. I haven't done voice yet because I feel kind of douchey saying "lights on" when no one's here. Do it. So it's badass, I just, bro. I feel like Tony Stark. Do it, Danny. With your Manju cases, did you customize them or pick one of kind of their templated? Products. These are preset ones. They're the 698s, which are the the vertical ones, and then the 6110. No, I think it's 6110. Yeah. So it's pretty much 110 meters, I believe, or millimeters. Yes. So I think Sean has the 165s. Yeah. But, um, but for statues, I'm going to go custom because... That's what I'm waiting on for those because all my statues have different heights. So I want to make sure once I receive all my statues in, I'm going to measure all of them and make sure everyone has the perfect height, height clearance. So for the statue magic cases, I'll be doing custom custom heights and, and widths. Gotcha. Nice. Yeah, because I ordered a few Maji cases, but I haven't ordered like everything for my entire collection yet because I don't know what these ones are going to look like for the size of my room but so i'll say since i have this up um reach out to brian uh if you don't know what it's gonna look like for the size of your room whatever if you take measurements where you want it to go uh brian will custom make you something um and he will always try to err on the side of using standard sizes versus custom custom's not that much more expensive it's like 20 or 30 dollars more it's really not you know it's not like quadruple the price price like a normal custom is so um yeah, so I this is this is my setup. Uh, I as well, just like Danny, am not a customizer in so much as that I I you know I like this because it's modular. You can buy it off the shelf. If my collection gets bigger in the future, I can buy another piece and attach it to it, etc. Uh, and it looks great out of the box. Um, the wait time is 
you know, it's well known <laughs> um, at this point. It's about a year in between ordering and when you get it. So, um, and I did it twice. I ordered some and then realized, shit, I want it, I want it to look like this. So I, I ordered a separate batch. So um, this is 10 166, 165s, uh, two uh, 696 corner units, one 655 corner units, and then two custom 696, you know, type deals and then one custom 655 so all six scale um i have a lot of six scale figures so this all goes uh together with that um as you can see here it's not uh complete yet um it's not filled with figures i've finally got everything built and ready to go at the end of last year and i've been slowly kind of doing it um i have a couple kids so it's slow going but taking my time enjoying it uh as much as i can so um yeah if you keep on going to the next slides uh, here's sort of the ones that we've been doing uh, so far. Um, I try, I'm try. i trying to stick with everything uh, Star Wars on one side and then uh, Marvel on the other. Um, there's a couple of spillovers, but I'm trying to do that. Um, right now, everything is a little bit clustered. Uh, as you can see on that side, everything's a little bit clustered, but I'm not sure that's the final configuration yet. So um, I'm still working that out. But um, one thing you'll notice is on the left there is those stands. So the stands are called six figurine stands or something like that i forget um the standard mm -hmm. size is four inches high uh i had these cut down to two uh just based on my you know how high uh you know how tall a standard figure is with a base versus without a base and how high, how high the the actual um cabinet is to see what you can fit in there so um you know that's about some customizing i had them do at the at the place uh before i got them i do recommend it um i've seen some people get the four inches and they are they are tall you know they they can work but i like the look of that and you can always make it taller but it's hard to make it shorter so i went with that um this is how they connect together if you can kind of look there uh everything's super clean uh they connect together uh it's a pain in the butt to get them together but once they're together they look super clean um and you can see the lights up there on the side is there a um, scratch in this back panel yeah there's a scratch in the back panel i did I that some of mine had that too yeah, yeah, I did that when I was putting in the shelf. It's a pain in the ass. So. That looks really, really good, though, overall, Sean. Yeah. Um, both for you and Danny, what did you guys choose for lights, like light options with the power supplies, and then like pure white or warm light? What did you guys do there? Would you do it different? So I did pure white uh, LED strips, and, and I did it with the, you, you get the uh, option of ordering like a 10 amp power supply that goes with it. Um, I, would highly recommend when you do do that to upgrade some of the cables that you get. Um, just, I had some heat issues that I, I replaced them all. So um, just, you know, we're, we're to the wise on that one, but yeah, uh, LED strips um, with the 10 app power supply and, and uh, yeah, you connect basically three or four cases together. Um, so all these kind of six, what is it? 16 that I have right here are running off of five plugs. Um, and they, they have the same Wemo plugs that Danny does. So, um here's just sort of a, on a side picture from inside the case you can see it's all they're all level they're all you know uniform and they all kind of goes across the whole way so i like that look a lot and i'm using those sort of as little um storage areas as well um just again from the other angle um there in the right hand side picture that's something that danny had talked about as well the cabling uh, if you notice mine doesn't stick out uh, forwards and look all ugly like Danny's does. How dare you! Um, <laughs> wow, shots fired. Because I, I took the time. <laughs> I took the time to measure twice and cut once, and so I cut down all of my sleeves that uh, that house a cable on top. I cut them all down to like eleven inches, um, so that way you can get that nice curve and, and have them hold it there. Um, yeah, and that's what I do with that one. I, you know, I still need to adjust the other side where they're kind of hanging down, and I will use tape like Danny did as well. Um, but as far as that side, yeah, that's my other recommendation for customizing, if you want to call it that. But cut down those little sleeves uh, so that, you know, you can get a nice curve and, and run it that way and you don't have anything sticking out the side. Um, and then here's another another angle, just some of the eccentricities. So uh, here you can see that the cables are all hidden there. Um, they give you maybe, you know eight or something like that per case I, I don't know how many you know you're actually going to use but i like two they're just kind of in the channel to keep the cables inside the channel um it's kind of a pain in the ass to get in there but they do uh make everything look good 
and then on the left there is an image of the uh, magnetic sort of front, um, and that holds everything on, holds the panels on nicely, and and doesn't make it so like with Dean when he opened the details, everything shakes around because I had that same exact problem, which is why I wanted to get rid of them. Um, but uh, it's a nice nice bond, so you know it's not going to fall off, but it doesn't shake when you kind of take it off. So um, yeah, super great with that. Um, and go to the next one. I think. I don't What's know I this right else. here on the left? This little grommet. So that little grommet is a little safety screw. So it's, they stick on with a. There's like a little lip and then a. Um, sorry, I got a phone call. It's a little lip and a uh, and a magnet, so it stays on there. But as an extra added safety, it has those little screws that you can screw into the top, so you can't. It doesn't fall off. You know, wow, um, the fancy, kids around and stuff fancy. like that. So, um, and then you what. One other thing I'll recommend too is um, Danny doesn't have it, uh, but I recommend it is the legs. Um, you can order your cases with legs now. And what that does, yes, with Danny's legs, what that does is it helps you hide all the cables and all that stuff that Danny had off to the side. I have all mine underneath the cases. So it's just clean and you don't see anything uh, on either side. So highly recommend the uh, the legs as well. That's all. What do you got, Ben? That's a that's amazing when you're talking about the detoffs too and how they shook everything around. I used to have Lego figures standing in a detoff and every time I'd open the cabinet door, they'd all fall over. <laughs> so it's terrible. But for mine, um, so I've got the uh, the IKEA Calax uh, shelves uh, with the Philips Hue light strips on the back. So I love the Philips Hue. I mean, they Hue, they, they illuminate legit. beautifully. They are they're a little expensive for sure. I mean, they're definitely an investment. Um, but they're beautiful. I, the, the one the one challenge I have with them is they don't photograph as well as they look in person. So even in this photograph here that you guys see, I think I've only got that illuminated to like a 50%. Uh, what it's behind me right now, it's illuminated at 20%. If I were to turn that up to 100%, you can see absolutely every detail on those figures. It's amazing. Uh, but it doesn't photograph so great. So that, that I would say that's my only, my only downfall of my display. Um, the only other thing I guess that uh, that is a challenge, at least in terms of the Calax shelves, is as you guys can see, there's not a head, not a ton of head clearance, right? And so I can't put them on figure stands. They have to be able to stand by themselves. Uh, and anything that's taller than about the 12 inches literally just doesn't fit. So one of my figure regrets uh, not too long ago was the Batman Beyond. Loved the figure, looked amazing, uh, but he was a full head and shoulders taller than that Batman up top. Uh, and I couldn't fit him in the I couldn't fit him in the shelf, so he just didn't jive very well with the collection. Um, but other than that, I mean, again, if you guys have been considering the Philips light strips, uh, Philips U, and you're just not totally sure uh, you want to pull the trigger on the cost, I still 100% recommend it. I think it's uh, it's totally worth the money. Even the bulb that I've got on me right now, I've got one of the Philips U bulbs uh, in my lamp, so I can kind of control ambient lighting all over the room. You can set different moods and all that good stuff. So hopefully it's not too distracting, but I've been playing with my lighting a little bit in here while I've been going and listening to you guys, because uh, it's just fun. It's just fun to do. Every time I come downstairs, it's a different feel, and different vibe. So totally recommend it. Wow, you got the After Dark colors going. You'd love to see it. 100%. Um, so other things, I know Usby touched on it with the uh, Magic cases, but uh, getting acrylic uh, risers, these are like for jewelry displays, uh, and they really blend in quite nicely with Detoffs. Uh, you can get them for like 15 bucks for a pack of three. Some of the bigger ones, you might be looking at 30, 40 bucks, but um, especially if you're doing like Black Series uh, inside of a... Detoff, I mean, that's a six inch figure, like in a 16 inch cabinet, being able to use that space a little bit more efficiently is really helpful. It also kind of gets your figures at different levels, which I enjoy taking advantage of. Danny mentioned it as well, but smart plugs. Um, when I was first moving into this house, I was like, you know, I don't know if I have money for smart plugs. Let me just go get some regular timers from like Walmart. And they were like 10, 12 bucks a timer. And even back then, three or four years ago, smart timers, you can get them for like eight to 10 bucks. So you're paying the same amount for a much, much better timer and uh, you're able to control it from anywhere in the world or, or with your voice. So I recommend getting smart timers. Uh, there's a ton of different brands to look into. I think the ones that I use, um, they're called like Ghost Sun wireless timers. They're, they look and sound really shitty, but they work perfectly. Uh, they just hook up to your Wi-Fi. So those are really good. 
Uh, you can also accent your displays, our friends for OFAC backdrops and bases. You can get printouts for your DTOFs or for your bookshelves or whatever of different licenses or different uh, different backgrounds. I've even heard of people going to like Walgreens or Kinko's, printing a, a backdrop, having them cut it, and then you just have that ability for you know five or six bucks to get a uh, custom backdrop or a diorama backdrop for your uh, collection. So definitely take a look at that. Uh, one thing I would recommend avoiding, so you can see I bought these five times there, the uh, wireless remote controls for um, dimmable uh, LED strips, specifically the ones that look exactly like this. I've had some remotes that worked famously for years, but these were the ones that came with the strips that I have been raving about, and they absolutely suck. Uh, so much so that the company that makes these strips actually started sending you a little potentiometer in the box. It's like a little dial that you can use to manually adjust the lights uh, because these things go out like after like a month. It's basically you set them once and then whenever they turn on, they're just always at that that number. And uh, I recommend avoiding these. These are, so you can see it's been a few years since I bought them, but these, these are not so good. So if you're looking at uh, different adjustable LEDs, but they don't come with the remote control, definitely avoid the RGB zone two pack at all costs. Uh, does anyone have anything else they want to add to like the pimp your cabinet discussion? I think we had a pretty good little show and tell there. Um, Oh, sorry, Ben, you go ahead. I was just going to quick ta tag on there. I think just you'd get what you pay for hundred percent. I mean, we've got a $14 light strip up on our TV upstairs. Every time you turn it on with a remote, it strobes at you. You feel like you're going to have a seizure. Uh, but also again, like with these Phillips, to get that brightness, which is huge. So I think definitely get what you pay for. But go ahead there, Dylan. Yeah, with with the strips, Zach, that's I don't think I definitely haven't used that brand you did. That's why I asked that is because and one of the reasons I went away to from D I had Detolfs years ago and I went away from them because I my lights kept falling down and the same thing with them shaking a bunch and they just didn't feel that great. So that's why I asked about the stickiness of them. I've also uh, use them like on desks and under counters and things like that and they weren't great. Nice jobs, Danny. I didn't do anything. That was Dean. That was me. Bullshit. <laughs> I'll isolate the audio file. That was definitely you. <laughs> Motherfucker. I saw uh, your immediate reaction. I, <laughs> I, I was going to ask for the... Because Ben's looked really good with the uh, like the shelves on the bottom to like stuff boxes. Do you guys use anything there or have any recommendations there with those to like set maybe like a, cause I know Sean, you mentioned the pegs or the legs for the detail mm -hmm. or the mod cases. Yeah. Um, have you seen any good kind of just like black shelving that you, that would be a good idea for setting that on? I've seen some people talk about it and I don't know what they are. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. I know a lot of the Ikea stuff that people will use to put DTOFs on and, and probably mod cases too, are like the ones that are built for TV stands, um, just cause they're built to hold more weight. Um, so those would be a good, good call and you could put some boxes in there, but realistically, I mean, it just depends on the size of your collection. Cause I mean, if you have, you know, a ton of figures, you're not gonna, you're just throwing them in a garage or in a storage or something like that, the boxes at least. So, um, yeah, I'm not sure specifically, but I, I've I've seen a bunch of people use the IKEA stuff for, uh, you know, the for the um, oh, what was it? It just came into my mind, but I forgot about. But yeah, the TV stands I know a lot of people use where you can store some boxes in there as well. Um, but I don't know any specific ones now. For mine, it's Asta, I, yeah. for mine, it's IKEA Calyx all the way down. But with the IKEA Calyx, you can actually get doors to be able to install on it. So like instead of having a separate okay. cabinet under mine. It's still all part of the same unit. It just looks like a cabinet holding it up. One of the best parts sure. of that is I run all the lighting and wires in behind. So then I can hide them. I can tweak them if I need to. And it holds things like games and comic books down there and all the good stuff too behind the doors that, you know, you don't want to necessarily have take away from your, your clean display. But I would, I would check out the, the Calyx, especially if you guys do detox. I know that I think the Calyx shelf holds about four detox, I want to say. Uh, based on what I've seen kind of online. Um, and then those Ikea Bestas, or sorry, Billies as well. I know, I think somebody mentioned that they have Billies. Those Billies with the uh, with the doors are beautiful. And that might have been Marco's display, I think uh, that was mentioned. So. 
Uh, Cuervo says, Ben, how do you handle dust since you don't have doors? Do you dust a lot? Uh, so I'm very fortunate. We just bought this house. Uh, we just had it built not too long ago. So our ventilation system is super clean. Nobody's ever lived in this house before. So we don't have a lot of dust uh, right now. Uh, but I do dust consistently just with a, a little little Swiffer sort of thing. Uh, keeps it going. Uh, what, what sticks to it actually more than anything is, is cat hair randomly we have a silver bangle and every time that guy runs by it blows out a couple pieces of cat hair so definitely something wow. to keep on top of for sure but i like being able to reach in and touch the figures i, I don't know and i i get the feel behind uh behind glass and I, I wish mine were a little bit more protected that way but being able to just physically walk up to it and tweak the tweak the pose and all that can't beat it nice um Let's move on. So, uh, the Batman, um, we've been seeing reviews about it all week. In fact, a lot of our team is watching the film right now. If you've seen it already, if you're going to see it, please make sure not to spoil it in our Facebook group. Uh, but IGN gave it a 10 out of 10. The Batman is a gripping, gorgeous, and at times genuinely scary psychological crime thriller that gives Bruce Wayne the grounded detective story he deserves Robert Pattinson is great as a very broken Batman, but it's Zoe Kravitz and Paul Dano who steal the show with a movingly layered Catwoman and a terrifyingly unhinged Riddler. They gave it a 10 out of 10. And um, I think pretty much every single uh, review that I've seen thus far has been, you know, above 90%. So very excited to see that. Uh, Dean, I think you said you're seeing it what day? Friday? Thursday. Thursday. Very cool. Excited for you. I think I'm going to see it Sunday. So I am definitely very excited for that. And with all the news of the invasion of Ukraine, Warner Brothers pulls the Batman's release in Russia. So no Pornhub, no OnlyFans, no <laughs> uh, Batman. Not a not a great time to be uh, in that part of the world. But um, I think it's interesting that they, <laughs> they were like, you know what? Fuck you guys. We're not going to release this movie in Russia. Um the hits keep coming now we did have a movie of the week but uh we had a lot of uh last minute additions to the show i think we realized quite a few people are going to be missing so i think we're going to not talk about it Dean. are we going to briefly talk about it we still got about 20 minutes to make up so what do you want to do about that um yeah i mean we could talk about because i still haven't finished it so we could talk about most of it because i know uh, dylan did watch the movie Okay. Uh, Danny, did you watch it? Yeah. Did you watch it, Zach? I did. Oh. We can wait. Yeah, because... Either way is fine. Eddie and John are here, and I don't think Ben or Sean saw it. What's the, what's the movie? Unforgiven, what was it? the uh, Clint Eastwood version. Clint Eastwood. I haven't seen it. All right, well, we'll skip that for now. Michael C. says, Sideshow delays the endgame battle damage. Iron Man again. Damn. Any other websites to order from? I think, unfortunately, if you want to pay that Sideshow price, I think that's your only option. But if you're uh, willing to go overseas, uh, I don't know if 1-6 Corner has it, but uh, there's always uh, Toys Buying Agent. Uh, Dean, who, who was the... Tim Sent, there you go. Thank you. Uh, and then, of course, you have... Um, toys wonderland though that may be quite a bit more expensive so um it does it does suck and actually one thing i want to touch briefly on uh since we kind of have to free flow for a bit eric from the patreon chat said he just got an email a few days ago that the replacement portrait for the mark 85 uh, aka the Stuart little portrait is uh an imminent arrival by sideshow wow. so that's very excited if you if you were able to commit to the replacement uh you'll be getting that soon and I know there was a whole bunch of mess that you have to deal with. I think you have to send the old portrait back or something to that effect. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how that goes down. Um, but yeah, Ben, you sweet, sweet angel. You stepped in at the last minute. You answered the horn of Gondor. You fake sick to leave work. We appreciate it. And let's talk briefly real quick. So you um, jumped on Marco's show with your wonderful, wonderful uh, fiance. And uh, it was a it was a great show. I was watching it. While I was doing a bit of uh, first time home buyers education course, which was killing me. But since <laughs> then, you've you've got a new camera. You're streaming again this Saturday. So let's talk about that show on One Six Fix. And then, uh, if you want to talk about what else you're streaming on, let's let's chat about that for a bit. 
Yeah, so, uh, I mean, geez, like, my week has exploded all of a sudden. You know, I was lucky enough to come on uh, with Marco on a show on Saturday, which was already a bucket list item. You know, I mean, bringing a new person on who hasn't had FaceTime uh, with the audience. Or I'm right. That's true. I, I, should, you know, I misspoke. Gigi might How run there. That's true. I know. I know. She's she's going to cancel me in the chat, but. You know, it was, again, when you don't know what somebody's going to say or how they're going to act and you're kind of just taking a chance on bringing them on, you know, that was that was really cool. Um, but then having a chance to then join Pose Wars the same night, uh, you know, I got I got out of the weekend and, you know, my, my friends at work are like, oh, you know, like, how was your weekend? And I'm like, I had a bucket list weekend, you know, like I got to do all this cool <laughs> shit, you know, um, and it's and it's true. right? I mean, you guys said I helped you out. Honestly, I would have done it. I would have figured out a way to do it anyway. I've been I've been wanting oh, to hang yeah, out with you guys for a little while and seeing the chat and you know having a good time with those guys is awesome. But uh, then having a chance to kind of come on tonight, you know, uh, like you were saying, Zach, you, you invited me kind of in the in the last hour there, hoping uh, hoping I might be able to join in. And of course, of all nights, it's scale. our it's our, literally our Christmas party that was supposed to happen in December for our work. They ended up having to push it to March. So of all days, it had to be today. And I'm not kidding. I was like, I had my dinner. I like rushed eight at the corner, and I'm like, oh, you know, capital, like but... the, the gluten, the gluten, it's getting to me, right? So wow. <laughs> I ended up, uh, I ended up being able to piece out, which was awesome. And then this Saturday, uh, like you said, uh, um, Marco's asked me to co-host with him, uh, which is awesome because Gigi, I guess, is off uh, on base, uh, doing her, uh, doing her stuff. So. Uh, I get to be fortunate enough to come and co-host uh, with a with a special guest, which is pretty cool. So I don't know if I'm allowed to say who yet, so I won't I won't say necessarily ah. right now. But oh, I want to know uh, for the show. But yeah, special it? guest. So definitely tune into one six. Definitely uh, tune into one six fix on on Saturday morning there or afternoon, depending on what time zone you're on. Uh, that'll be uh, 12 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, which is I think 11 a.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time, uh, and I'll go from there. So, uh, and then obviously, if you guys need me to jump on any time, like you said, I've got the camera now, I've got the microphone going, all the good stuff. Uh, I know the first 16 minutes of our first Saturday chat last weekend that you see on the screen uh, was pretty overblown in terms of the sound, but you know, got to tweak the bugs at some point, right? So, stressing me out, dude. I was messaging Marco. Oh like, yeah, bro, bro, what the fuck? 100%. I thought you said you fixed this shit. Literally, <laughs> well, like, and dude. I didn't like. Sounds like I'm in a tornado tunnel, dude. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, and like it, it doesn't seem that bad when you're testing, right? Um, but then when you play it back on YouTube, I was yeah. like up and down and up and down. And <laughs> so, it's okay. Yeah, yeah you'll you sound good. good today, and I think you said like you had just gotten the mic that morning, so you know you were kind of still dialing it in. And yeah, well, and the computer time. the computer program that came with the uh, the Yeti mic that I got wouldn't work with the computer it worked once and then stopped working entirely so that show i was at like a hundred percent uh volume and everything like i had 100 percent gain 100 percent volume i couldn't tweak it at all and so i appreciate everybody that stuck it out and, and watched the show anyways and obviously we're we're getting it tweaked now so but it's been fun uh you know i said you know of all the if you had a highlight reel of you know on a tv screen one day when you're dead uh wow. You know, Pose Wars and one six scale or one six fix in one day would definitely wow. be one of the best days uh, of my life. So what thanks, about, guys. What about I, CW I Tuesday? Would CW Tuesday make the the highlight reel too? Or hey, I, that was a bonus. I you know, <laughs> we'll see, we'll see how it goes. I came in late, so <laughs> it's okay. We knew, we knew it was late. So how did you like Pose Wars? Because um, it, it ended up being quite uh, quite the evening for you on Pose Wars as well. It was cool. I you know what I. Uh, I've watched the show every show since that uh, since it came out. Dean's uh, Dean's voice at the beginning there makes me laugh every time, right? But uh, when he's introducing the show, but it was stiff competition. Uh, you know, Loku Lu he he brought the fire with some of his poses and a couple of the other guys. I mean, like they were crushing it. Uh, and so, you know, I've always fancied myself as more of a more of a character poser. Like as you can see in the background, nothing's going too wild. But I also can't fit too much of a dynamic pose in these in these IKEA Calyx cubes. Uh, so I haven't had that much practice. So since that show, I'm like, okay, I've got two weeks until I'm on the next one. Uh, I'm figuring out which figures to get. I'm on on shopping on sideshow, seeing what I can maybe get here that's a little more poseable than you know the Mark Seven Iron Man and a Stormtrooper, uh, which I'll be able to do absolutely nothing with. Um, but yeah. We'll see. I think I, I think I took fourth place, but I think that's only because Marco's figure fell face first and damaged <laughs> his head sculpt, and it was it was devastating to watch. Oh, <laughs> did it? oh shit! Wars. 
Uh, you have two of your uh, opponents for the next round, Dean the Dream Martin and Danik and Lee Walker, uh, sizing you up, bro. They were fucking, they were taking yeah. notes. So it'll be good. I to, was surprised to, to see. A... Yeah. What sorry, sorry, Zach. I was said I was gonna say I was surprised to see that uh, Dean sold his uh, or is trying to sell his Spider Man. I thought you loved that guy. You you were playing with him on the camera all the time. I thought he was. Sold I thought he was your favorite. It. He's sold gone. it. Yeah. No. Uh, he wants it just, this I bad have, boy. Wow. I have the uh, no. I have the uh, homecoming one, and that's like my ideal Spider-Man. You know, with the blue and mm-hmm. the red. So the that one was it was it was a great figure. I just I uh, Zach, what are you doing? I fucking love this figure, bro. This is it's the sideshow figure, classic yeah. Batman. It's so over and hang out, bro. Come over and let, you bring a toy. We'll play like. We'll take a little stop out of motion, bro. <laughs> like on hold on old school on. style. Hell yeah, well, and, and you know, Zach maybe and I, I may, know a guy who played like that. And like, maybe I need some help from the chat and the panel. Honestly, like my figures that I've got remaining uh, are the DX uh, DX11 Joker, uh, two Stormtroopers, Mark uh, Seven Iron Man. I've got uh, Mandalorian Beskar Mando. That's the uh, figure to pose around. Oh, he's beautiful. He's Best beautiful. I've got the, uh, the upgraded suit Spider, upgraded suit Spider Man. Um, but I'm like, you know, the two most posable figures that I think I've got left, anyways, are the uh, the DX11 Joker and the Spider Man. But I don't think the DX11 Joker will be able to stand up by himself, <laughs> so I won't I get any of the no base points. So you gotta you gotta pace yourself, right? Because there's no rule against using the same figure all the time, but it's gonna get mm-hmm. old and you're gonna run out of ideas. I would go with like something crazy and then something like the Stormtrooper, which you can get posed really crazily, but mm-hmm. it's also fairly sturdy. You can stand up on its own, etc. Mm-hmm. Um, it's going to be interesting because I know we got a few a few more rounds, then we got the kind of like the all star game with all the best posers, and then more rounds in the playoffs. So you want to kind of get as many points as possible. So, you know, the no base, like that's a big risk. It's a big reward, too. So. You know. Well, and I think, you know, what I, one of the things that I took away from, and like I, we stayed on the chat a little bit longer after the show ended. Um, I think some of the guys that ended up coming up with the most points kind of had a story behind their pose. It wasn't just yes. that they came up with a cool pose, but it was that there was a story there, you know, and the Green Ranger and Deadpool just, I, uh, the, you know, Deadpool you would think goes with everybody, but other than cutting the Green Ranger's head off, I had a hard time kind of pairing them together, right? And so yeah. I think going forward, I'll look for those guys who that, you know, like you said, like a Mando and a Stormtrooper or something that, think, that you can tell a story with. I think the most creative use of that was um, Six Scale Reviews. I think it was Dan. He had, um, I think it was a Kenobi and a Maul, but he could, if he got baned, he could switch and the poses would still make sense with the Stormtroopers in the back. Or the, I think it was Clone Troopers, rather. Um, that was a really smart way to do it. So, just some ideas. Um, but, Dean, it's that time of the show. We say thank you to the people of the world. To keep the show running. We are the world. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, we are the children. <laughs> yeah, we want to thank uh, Sean Fear, Ian Seavey, Renee Mendez, Eric Mariscal, Quinn Aguirre, Lemur Hernandez, King Louie, Mark Pearson, Paul Schreiber, James Colley, Equan, Chris Fell and Serena, Ben Thomas, what a guy, what a handsome guy. Uh, Chris Lenny, also just two hotties right after the other. Wow. Uh, David Jones, Sam Gist, Daminator, Joao Breda, Danny Lee, sweet, sweet Danny Lee, Dini Martin, Stephen Credit, Big Old Fern, King Zach, Susan Mariquin, Mike Cruz, Lisa Martin Bomoski, Rick DeGregorio, Alvin Jules, the handsome, the angry. The reissue hater, the everyday collector, Ricardo Valdez, Jose CZ, Irwin Azucena, the illustrious Rainer, Alan Morgan, Tukathri, Wa, Seth Tucker, CC3PO, Scott Smith, Dolmaton, Bola Boyd, Jimmy James, Stephen Purchase, Sean Usby, what a sweet angel, Scott Bradley, Big Pips, Stephen Maria Stanley, Jesse Contreras, Eddie Manzanares, Louis Bennett, Chip Perrin, Jimmy Hernandez, Gigi the Judgmental, and Brenton. Paul, 
Sean is going to be disappointed that I had myself on mute for that because every time you say Brenton Palmer, she calls it out from the upstairs living room. So <laughs> every time, oh, it's awesome. It. <laughs> Uh, we have two great stickers for you guys. The Pose Wars holographic sticker and the Dylan sticker. Look at that fucking a face that everyone could love. You'd love to see it. Do, 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 I'm excited. Dude, I, Those yeah. turned out all right. I was, I was going to say, I can't believe we came out with a uh, Joe Exotic sticker. Wow. Where'd Zach go? Uh, 2000 all over again. And look at the Pose War sticker. My goodness. This shit is crispy, bro. Beautiful. But if you stick it like this, it doesn't count. You gotta stick it. Stick it with a little bit of an angle going to it. Anyways, um, let's take a look here at the tiers. We have three tiers. The $5 tier. um, The uh, Sweet Angel sticker sent straight to your door and access to Ox After Dark Replay. The crispy tier, the $15 uh, certified crispy certificate on your first pledge and assistance with figure fixes and the $25 what a guy tier, uh, the 18 by 24 silhouette poster and doubles of all the stickers we send and all the benefits of the previous tiers. Uh, Sam, I do have your poster in my possession. We just got to get with Dean the Dream Martin to get it signed uh, and that'll ship out with your March sticker. So stay tuned for that. Manny, why am I on the list? I said it looks good. Dean's the one who came You're interrupting me. Uh, we have. <laughs> it wasn't me this time. Thank you, Danny. You sweet, sweet boy. Um, you're on the list because. Oh, look at that! They actually got the uh, other package. I mailed them too. I, I mailed them the uh, M4 Hobbit edit because they're getting Lord of the Rings. Uh, right. We have some great people that support us on uh, YouTube. We have Mojo Z78, OG fan, Absolute Irwin, uh, Beme, sweet, sweet Beme, uh, Test Jess One, Mark Pearson, DK Avenger 702, Ben Thomas. OMFG Rick, Justin Harass, Mike Oxlong, Paul Schreiber, S. Beam, Andrew Gibo, Andres IB, CC3PO, Daminator, and Lemur Hernandez. If you want to become a channel member, click that link there and hit the join button. Uh, here's a look at some of the benefits you get. The Patreon tier is 99 cents. If you're already in Patreon, you get four different loyalty badges depending on how long you've been a member and access to some amazing emojis. So if you're a channel member, drop some of those in the chat for us, including but not limited to the 9.8 baby, the Jumbo, which is a future sticker for Patreons, the Dean the Dream Martin sticker, and the Latin Gandalf emoji. Uh, you can also join the uh, 299 peanut gallery. If you're not a Patreon member, that gives you all the benefits, uh, the emojis, and the loyalty badges. So great stuff there. Uh, I look at our network. We have Collecting Weekly Live, OFAC, Small Talk, After Dark, In and Out of Collecting, Collecting Weekly Live Unboxing, Bricks and Brews, Live and Let Dies, Pose Wars, The Ringcast, and Collectors Club. Uh, here's a look at our schedule this weekend. Uh, we have. Uh, <laughs> we. <laughs> have uh after dark tomorrow at 10 30 small talk thursday at 8 30 uh friday uh 9 p.m is in and outs of collecting that's a new time slot so if you listen to in and outs regularly it's gonna be bumped up an hour saturday at 8 we have live and let dice and i believe we have bricks and brews on sunday and we also have a ring cast somewhere in the mix so it should be quite the weekend for collecting weekly uh so stay huge, tuned huge week for small talk too a lot of toy fair things and Sean, I know you were talking about hopping on. Are you going to be there? Yeah, I think I'm going to try to. I talked about it with my wife, so I think I should be able to join. Hell yes. Yeah, it's going to be a crazy week my for wife. small talk. Cuervo says, are we getting a Bricks and Brews sticker at some point? What do you think, Usby? Uh, does bear shit in the woods? Hell yeah, let's do it. <laughs> I've never seen it, <laughs> but uh, I imagine that they do. Uh, so let's uh, tentatively plan for that maybe for, what's uh, April? Maybe we'll think of a Bricks and Brew sticker. That's my birthday month, so let's do it, baby. Manny's working on a new Live and Let Dice logo, so that could be a double first-time Whoa, sticker month. That would be I very cool. That. Speaking of Dean Live and Let Dice, well... Speaking of Live and Let Dice, Dean, we're getting some real cool things going on at Live and Let Dice. Uh, we've seen the success of, of the Banes of Pose Wars. And so Cody is introducing a Bless and a Bane Wheel for D&D. So for a super chat, you can do uh, Banes such as Critical Failure, uh, a Bounty on your player character's head, an Act of Strahd, Frightened for 1d4 turns, or... Uh, you can get a bless wheel so you can get access to a permanent rare item treasure 2d4 times 100 gold so you might be looking at like 800 gold max 
divine intervention from your god, free critical hit, or advantage on your next roll, uh, including but not limited to some of these amazing effects. So stay tuned for that if you like Live and Let Dice. Uh, you can influence your favorite player characters with a super chat. Uh, if you like the network and you want to support us with purchasing some swag we do have it at t public lots of different shirts there you can also get like magnets and different things like that uh if you want so there's that option there uh and as far as our socials go we're on facebook our page is collecting weekly our facebook group is collecting weekly auxiliary we also have instagram at collecting weekly at collecting weekly underscore clips at the everyday collector and at in and outs of collecting and uh that's it for our plugs do you guys have any shout outs you want to give today dean uh, I do. I want to shout out um, uh, Mark Bucks. I think that's how you say it. Bukes, Bucks. Wow. Uh, he reached out to me with some uh, 9.8 Punchline comics. Um, just showing him. It was like 3 in the morning, and he just shot me a message like, yo, did you see this? I was like, hell yeah. And we just started talking for a bit. and Shoved me his collection, and he was a cool dude. Uh, it was just It was nice chatting with you know someone that you know, I never interacted with him before. I'd never seen him in the chat. So I just thought it was cool. You know, a fan of the show, just reaching out. Shout out um, to one of the original members of the Dream Team of Collecting Weekly, wow. Seth Tucker. He, oh. uh, a few months ago, he told me that he was kind of uh, working on some stuff in his personal life and he was going to kind of take a step back from uh, Collecting Weekly and from. Uh, you know some of the uh, things he was doing with collecting, and uh, I was I was concerned, but he said there's nothing to worry about. He just was you know trying to trying to tr yeah trying to try some new things, and uh, we got the great news today that he is officially a certified personal trainer. So he's been uh, oh. doing his uh, Orange Theory. Um, I don't understand how Correct, yogurt sir. is mixed with personal training, but yeah, he's, I don't yeah I don't really get it, but. Uh, he is um, Look at that. an official Sammy certified. Kiss. Wow, Sam, you fucking angel! What a nice guy! Job. What a fucking legend! How are you and Jumbo? What an absolute <laughs> mad and Jumbo, baby! Did you guys figure out how to say his last name? Because I laughed at that episode yes, when yeah. he's like, "It's it's it's guest like list," and Dean was like, "What?" <laughs> yeah, I was like, "It can still go either way." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He says guest. What we just got a new Patreoni. What a legend. New, pa new Patreone, Sam Gist, or Geist. Wait, what? No, he's already... <laughs> we, just new... <laughs> we just said that. Welcome to Patreone only? Oh, yeah, he's a Patreon tier, but he uh, he's in Patreon already. But It's yeah. my first day. It's, it's my first day. We forgive you, bro. <laughs> yeah, left-hand Jombo, baby. Only lefties from now on. Uh, sweet Sam, I guess there was an issue with some my of the stickers we sent. Blog. And uh, he hasn't been getting them, so we're gonna we're gonna do some customer service on our end, and we'll get you squared away, Sam. So you don't worry about a thing. The ox father will take care of you. I'll do it like um, this. Shout out to Badfish too. Oh Second yeah, best thank, customer thank service. You. Shout out to Badfish, uh, having a little one on the way. Very cool wow. to see another another member of the empire. Um, uh, but yeah, uh, bad tadpole. What are baby fish called? Fry. Guppies? Bad fry, baby. Are they really called really? fry? Yeah. Baby fish? Hmm? Yes. Dean, I used to... Oh, know? you did? Yeah, you're a fish freak. You're like one of those weird guys. <laughs> like, we're, we're like, you like see them out in public, you're like, wow. How like, oh, dare you? Wearing yeah. a grouper shirt. I love grouper. Yeah. yeah I love like, wow. <laughs> grouper groupie? That's Zach, dude. <laughs> oh, wow. How dare you? There you go. How dare you, Dean? <laughs> Oh, yeah, at least I didn't make you. Danny's joke, bro. Wait, what is my joke? You always make fun of him for his fish dying. Yeah, Danny, you fucking oh. guy. <laughs> hey, why'd you have to bring that up, man? Because yeah, I hate to see it. I had to get the heat off of me. Zach Hall's great. Left hand jumbo. <laughs> yeah, left hand jumbo, baby. Dude, I want to see left hand. Oh, hashtag, hashtag left hand jumbo, baby. That's the Dude, new way seriously. to get the heat off you. I can't. Left -hand I jumbo. can't. I can't fucking do it anymore, bro. I'm, I'm jumboed out. I think I jumboed my last fucking Chris right hand jumbo. jumbo. Fucking Wolverine style. <laughs> Anyways, um, Dylan, Ben, Usby, shout out to you guys for coming on tonight. Um, we uh, we were down down quite a few men tonight, and uh, you guys answered the horn of Gondor. Love to see it. 
shout out to Anytime. Mark Pearson too. Shout out to Mark Pearson. He's starting his uh, his own company, and we're all very proud of him. And um, whatever we can do to support our boy Mark, we'll make it happen. Construction Mark. company, not streaming company, but um, anyways. If anyone does, anyone else have any shout outs? Are we good to cut this one off? No, nope, I just I'm wanted good. to shout out. Uh... Shout out you guys, shout out Marco and Gigi, shout out the chat. Everybody's been super welcoming having me join uh, the new groups and everything and being super supportive. I know there's a lot of folks who watch every day who probably would love a, a shot to, to join at some point. So, again, thanks for the support, guys. Love everybody. Um, and keep uh, keep supporting. It'll be fun. Sweet. Okay. I'm Zach. I'm Dean. I'm Dylan. I'm Ben. God damn I'm Danny. Ben. Oh, <laughs> and I'm Sean, left hand jumbo. Left hand jumbo, baby. We'll catch you on the next episode. Bye. See you guys.